Dave Nathan welcoming you back to the Reach Jewelers pregame show. Carolina in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., for the 2024 ACC basketball tournament. The opponent, Florida State, and we are nearing the tip time just after 12 noon. Let's get a look at the North Carolina Farm Bureau's scoreboard while we have a moment. Helping you is what they do best. Our matchup, the first of four today in the ACC tournament. Pittsburgh and Wake Forest, the second game to tip off in the day's first session. That should be about a 2.30 start time. And the winner of that game takes on the winner of our game tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Down on the bottom half of the bracket, 7 o'clock, Duke and NC State match up and then it's the three seed Virginia getting on the floor for the first time against Boston College who has beaten Miami and took down Clemson yesterday. BC has already won twice and goes for a third win. It would come at the expense of Virginia. Elsewhere around the top 25 number one Houston plays TCU at three o'clock at noon at Xavier number two UConn. Sixth ranked Arizona takes on USC at three o'clock at seven from the Big 12. It's Kansas State and number seven Iowa State. Another seven o'clock tilt pits Providence against number eight Creighton and rounding out the top 10 Marquette versus Villanova at 930. That's it for your look at the North Carolina Farm Bureau scoreboard. Helping you is what they do best. We'll pump the brakes and come back with part two of the Continental Tire Coaches Corner and then our keys to the game. It's Carolina and Florida State from Learfield. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. This is Jones Angel, voice of the Tar Heels. And as a parent, I know nothing is more important than the safety of our children. More than 22% of teen-involved crashes per year in North Carolina are the result of distracted driving. Help protect our teenage drivers by ensuring they practice safe driving habits and avoid distracted driving. Always encourage your teens to put down the phone while driving and lead by example. Let's have a hands-free NC. Brought to you by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents of North Carolina. Learn more at trustedchoice.com slash goheels. It's not for everyone, only for you. The medication your doctor prescribes is exclusively yours to take as directed. Nobody else should be taking it. It's up to you to keep your medication secure and to safely dispose of any unused medications. Don't let anyone take what's yours. Your prescription, your responsibility. Be aware, don't share. Lock your meds. Supported by NCDHHS, Division of Mental Health, Developmental Disabilities, and Substance Abuse Services. Visit lockyourmeds.org slash NC. This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. They're not just the Tar Heels, they're your Tar Heels. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today to show your Carolina pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Tar Heels. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official bank of Carolina athletics. Copyright 2023. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. Do you hear that? That is the sound of BMW performance without a single piston or cylinder. A generation of all-electric vehicles designed and built like no other. The BMW iX, i7, and i4 revolutionize every drive into a thrilling opportunity to feel the pure rush of BMW 100% electric. But isn't that what you'd expect from the ultimate electric driving machine? Visit TriangleBMWDealers.com today for exceptional offers on the BMW Electrified Fleet. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Director's Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Director's Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Director's Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Director's Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Carolina Basketball is brought to you by Wells Fargo, official retail bank sponsor of Carolina Athletics. This is the Reed's Jewelers pregame show. 
It's Carolina and Florida State, these two meeting in the ACC tournament for the first time since 2021. I'm inside the Continental Tire Coach's Corner alongside the head coach of the Tar Heels. That, of course, is Hubert Davis. Coach, we're talking about Florida State, the opponent today. You talk about defending without fouling all the time. Jameer Watkins, I think, shot 17 free throws in the game against Virginia Tech. What, what's important in that regard for your team to defend an athletic and difficult team but not allow them a bunch of free chances at the stripe? Well, that's something that we've actually done well in the two games uh, you know, against them. I, I specifically told the team we have made 44 free throws and they've only been to the free throw line 19 times in the two games so that's a huge benefit for us uh Watkins uh poses a challenge for us because you know he gets to the free throw line because he's an excellent driver so we've got to protect the paint we've got to do a good job on his drive defending without fouling but if we do the job defensively that we did in the two matchups and keeping them off the free throw line that puts us in a good position Coach, last thing, Armando, I think either took four or five shots in the game in Tallahassee when when you guys played them down there. How can you get him more involved today? Yeah, that just won't work. You know, we just, um, it's really been the last three games that, you know, the two here and then the one at Florida State towards the end of the season, you know, we just need him to be dominant down low in the paint, you know, especially with their switching. They're going to have small guys and we got to make them pay. And so, um, we're going to get the ball to Armando as much as possible and just, you know, uh, try to dominate points in the paint. We always talk about post penetration and offensive rebounding, but a big part of our post is Armando. And we, we need him to have a big game. It's Carolina and Florida State quarterfinal round of the 71st ACC tournament. Coach, as always, thank you for your time and best of luck. All right. Thanks a lot, Jones. I appreciate it. And that's part two of the Continental Tire Coaches Corner, which sends us now to our keys to the game. Take your Tar Heels tailgate to the next level with a new Honda. See your Honda dealer of the Carolinas today. Jones, my key for this one is for Carolina just to get off to a good start. Florida State's already got that game under its belt, played from ahead in the earlier two games against the Tar Heels until Hubert Davis's team rallied late to win both. Going turnover, Zeke. Carolina just turned it over too much in Tallahassee. Tar Heels survived it, but they'd love not to have to survive today. Absolutely. I agree. I think controlling the paint for me. You know, Armando's got to be active inside, and we can't let them get a lot of easy shots in the paint. Those are our keys to the game brought to you by your Honda dealer of the Carolinas. As we get ready for Carolina and Florida State, let's quickly pause 10 seconds for a station ID down the lines on the Tar Heel Sports Network. The ACC tournament begins for Carolina. It continues for Florida State. It's the Heels and Knowles tipping things off when we come back. You've been listening to the Reach Jewelers pregame show from Learfield. Looking for the perfect match? Oh, yeah. Look at you. Find a vehicle you'll love at the Toyota Ready, Set, Go event. Toyota, let's go places. Get 2.99% APR for 36 months on a new 2024 Toyota RAV4. Offer valid through April 1st, 2024. Zero down for well-qualified buyers with approved credit and financing through Southeast Toyota Finance. 2908 monthly payment for every $1,000 financed. Excludes tax, tag, registration, title, and dealer fee. See dealer for details. Tournament time is here, but it's never too early to prepare for North Carolina's toughest opponent, hurricane season. The Tar Heel State is no stranger to hurricanes. That's why the North Carolina Department of Insurance wants you to get storm ready now. Create an emergency kit, make a home inventory to document your possessions, and talk to your agent about flood insurance. Having a plan is key when disaster strikes. For more information on what to do before, during, and after a storm, visit ncdoi.gov slash disaster. ncdoi.gov slash disaster. At Reed's Jewelers, we know that the rules of engagement were made to be broken. So don't settle for the first ring you see in the case. When you put a ring on it, make the moment your own with something that's just as unique as your love. Whether you're going big, keeping it subtle, or finding a happy medium, we're here to help you say I do with a -a one-of-a-kind design. Because doing things your way is what makes them mean everything. Reed's Jewelers, an official partner of Tar Heel Sports. Visit your local Reed's Jewelers in-store or online at reeds.com to chat with an expert. This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. Together, that's how we stay in the game, ready to play. As one great team, UNC Health is keeping you well by bringing renewed focus, approach, and dedicated services close to you. 
Exceptional care is what you and your family deserve. Together, let's put points on the board for life well played. Team up with UNC Health, proud partner of Carolina Athletics. For any surface and every season, Continental Tire is the smart choice in tires. From ultra-high performance tires like the Extreme Contact Sport to passenger touring tires to all-terrain light truck tires like the Terrain Contact AT, Continental has a tire that gives you confidence no matter the road conditions. Whether you're looking for summer, all-season, or winter tires, Continental Tire has something to fit your needs. Visit ContinentalTire.com to find your ideal tire. Continental Tire, a proud partner of Carolina Athletics. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes. Sync Sync My my Game. game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. That'll finish the Reeves Jewelers pregame show brought to you by Reeves Jewelers. Visit your local Reeves Jewelers or Reeves.com today. We'll move into the starting lineups presented by Coors Light. Coors Light made to chill, an official beer of the Tar Heels. Let's start with Florida State. Seminoles, the number nine seed in the 71st ACC tournament. Sixth time that they've been the number nine seed in this event. Every year that they've been the nine seed, They've beaten the eight seed and then lost to the one seed in the quarterfinals. Carolina hoping to keep that trend going today. Seminoles 17 and 15 in total. They finished ACC play at 10 and 10. They beat Virginia Tech 86-76 to advance to the quarterfinal round. Starting five for Leonard Hamilton, now in his 21st year at Florida State and 35th season as a college head coach. In the backcourt, Jalen Worley, the 6'7 junior from Mount Airy, Pennsylvania. Worley had 18 yesterday in the win over Virginia Tech. He's joined back there by good three-point shooter Darren Green, Jr., the 6'5 senior from Charlotte, a transfer from UCF, is shooting better than 39% from three this season. The forwards for FSU, Jameer Watkins. Talked about him a bunch in the pregame. He is FSU's leading scorer, rebounder, assister, and stealer through the regular season. He averaged better than 15 points a game in the regular season. He had a whopping 34-12 in the final three minutes against Virginia Tech yesterday. Also up front, Cam Corin, the 6'10 sophomore from Allen, Texas. Nine and a half points, four rebounds per game. And Baba Miller, 6'11 sophomore from Spain, averages just under eight points, five rebounds per game. He's the leading shot blocker for Florida State at better than one per contest. Now for the Tar Heels, they're the number one seed in this event. First time since 2017 that they've been the top seed. 27th time overall, 106 wins, 51 losses in this event with 18 championships for the Tar Heels, but they don't have one since 2016, which came here in Washington, D.C. Heels finished the regular season 25-6, and 17-3 and in conference play to, wear it, to earn the ACC regular season crown. Carolina number four in the AP poll and coaches poll this week. Hubert Davis, the ACC coach of the year. Fifth different Carolina coach to earn that honor is in his third year at Carolina, his alma mater, where he is 74 and 29. No changes for Carolina. The all-rookie team member, Elliot Cadeau, 6'1 freshman from West Orange, New Jersey, 7.5 points, 4 assists per game. The ACC Player of the Year, R.J. Davis, the 15th different Tar Heel to earn that honor, first since Justin Jackson in 2017. Davis averaging better than 21 points per game. That led the league through the regular season. Cormac Ryan coming off an all-time performance. The 6'5 graduate transfer had those 31 points at Duke on 8 of 12 shooting, 6 of 8 from 3, 9 of 10 at the free throw line. He is the ACC Player of the Week in that final week of the regular season. Third team All-ACC member Harrison Ingram, the 6'7 junior from Dallas, 12.5 points, better than 9 rebounds per contest. 
and Armando Baycott, second team all ACC by the ACC voting panel, first team all conference by the AP, and on the ACC's all defensive team as well. Baycott averaging a double double, just under 14 points and just over 10 rebounds per game. The 6'11 graduate student is from Richmond, Virginia. Let's get to the Duncan uniform report. Get back to buzzer beaters, blocks, bounce passes, and most of all, Duncan. Welcome back, Tario fans. America runs on Duncan. Heels as the better seed will be in their home whites with Carolina blue numbers, letters, and trim. The Argyle down the side. Florida State going road black today with gold numbers, letters, and trim. A little bit of garnet mixed in the trim down the sides of the unis and shorts for the Knolls as well. Three familiar ACC names are the officials, Lee Cassell, Tommy Morrissey, and A.J. Desai. Just about time to go here in the quarterfinal round. There's already been seven games played in this event before the Tar Heels get started here on Thursday afternoon. Pitt and Wake Forest play after this. You have Duke and NC State this evening, Virginia and Boston College this evening as well. It will be Baycott and Miller to jump it up. Lee Cassell will step in between. And the quarterfinal round of the ACC tournament is underway. Miller slaps it into the backcourt where Florida State will have the basketball first. It is FSU working around the perimeter. Here's Watkins at 34 points. Yesterday, Cormac Ryan trying to guard him. Bounces it in the post to Baba Miller. He's on the baseline against Ingram. Drives in, sends it out to Worley. Stripped on the drive left of the lane. Out of bounds off the Tar Heels. Cadeau got caught behind just some body traffic there, which allowed a, appeared an open look at the rim, but he'll strip it away. Florida State will be inbounding with 10 on the shot clock. Working around the perimeter, now to Watkins on the left wing. Shot clock down to five as it goes down low to Miller. Ingram tried to get around him for a steal. That allowed Miller the easy dunk after Ingram couldn't get the basketball. Yeah, Florida State ran two plays in a row there for Baba Miller, trying to get him inside. Ingram guarding him, who's undersized. Uh, they knew he'd have an opportunity. Yeah, Miller is 6'11". Ingram is listed at 6'7 for the Tar Heels. Huber Davis kind of puts his palms in the air as he didn't like where Carolina was going. Back door to R.J. Davis. Had an open layup. It was blocked away, but Carolina gets the loose ball. Misses a three by Cormac Ryan. Baycott, the offensive rebound. He can't finish in traffic. And Florida State out of there with it. Tar Heels thought they had drawn a couple fouls on that possession. Didn't get a whistle at all. Watkins on the drive. He can't finish through contact from Cadeau. Cadeau quickly with the rebound and the push ahead to R.J. Davis. He'll wait for his teammates to catch up. Still 2-0. Florida State. A switch has Baba Miller guarding R.J. Davis. He drives into the paint, sends it back out, and Carolina will set up in the half court. Still 2-0 FSU. 18.30 to go. Just getting going here in Washington, D.C. Cadeau looking for Baycott. Floats the pass down to him. FSU has him doubled out to Cadeau. They'll give him that three, and he misses it off the back iron. A little sloppy on offense there. Trying to get our monitor the ball against the guard. Uh, just didn't get the shot we wanted. Still 2-0 Florida State. Garen Green Jr. on the sideline. Sends it to Watkins. Now in the left corner to Worley. Jump stop in the paint. Forces one up short. Baycott there to clean up the rebound for Carolina. Hubert Davis urging his team to get down the floor. Heels the other way. Z, R.J. Davis, middle of the floor. Good defense by Cadeau. Great drive by R.J. there. And he drives right in the lane to hook it home. Davis off the glass for Carolina's first basket. As the Tar Heels take the lid off, it's 2-2. 17.40 to go first half. Baba Miller between the circles for Florida State over on the left sideline to Watkins. R.J. Davis guarding him at the moment as he goes up high to Green Jr. Now to Corrin, hands off to Baba Miller. Miller stops at the right elbow, tried to dump it down to Corrin. Corrin couldn't catch it cleanly and fumbles it over the baseline. Carolina being really active on defense here. Florida State trying to get in the lane. Uh, really... Carolina's doing a great job trying to push him out, trying to keep him out of there. And now Florida State's going to pick up with a full court press. Tar Heels get it in to R.J. Davis, and once they do, FSU loosens up as Davis bounces it right back to Cadeau. Baba Miller guarding uh, Cadeau here. It's a lot of size on the Tar Heel freshman guard. Of course, there's just going to be a lot of size out there, period, because it's Florida State. 2-2 two, two the score as Ingram has it in the left corner for Carolina in the front court. Trying to back his way down the baseline against Watkins. Has to send it back out to Cadeau. 
Kudo crossover into the paint, finds R.J. Davis driving on the right side, kicks it left corner, open three for Ingram, is good right at the shot clock horn. Great drive by Kudo, great cut by R.J., and then R.J. able to find uh, Ingram on the baseline for the three. There is a microphone. I'm not sure what that There's is. There's something, something hanging, hanging down. off the basket that the Tar Heels are shooting on. It does. I think it's the mic that TV has on the basket got knocked off during that sequence, and it's just kind of it looked from from where we are. It looks like it's floating in air, <laughs> but it's uh, connected to a cord. I think it's a thing that every time you swish a basket, you can hear it yeah. on the TV. So. It's just dangling down yeah. right now, and so the two teams will go to their respective benches. I think they're looking for the person to fix it. Yeah, they don't. They, because nobody can just put that right up there. I think they are going to go ahead and take the 16-minute media timeout. They will. So that, they're going to take that timeout early. It's at 16.50 on the clock. But I'm going to tell you, there, there's nobody there right now to <laughs> fix the hanging microphone. So got to find somebody, find a ladder. Let's see what all happens here. 16.50, here comes the ladder. 16.50 to go first half. Just getting going, but now we're going to have to stop because of this mic issue. 5-2, Tariel's on top from Learfield. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talking basketball. But legendary teams let their performance do the talking. Like the Ford Bronco SUV. Rugged and powerful, so you can conquer just about any terrain. Connectivity that allows you to stay in touch. Designed to make your adventures worth talking about for years to come. Ford Bronco and Bronco Sport. That's what legends are made of. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. Some model trims and features may not be available or may be subject to change. This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. A day where great food, friends, and family always come together. And bringing people together is what Harris Teeter is all about. We make sure you have the best and most delicious game day foods. Whether you're heading to the arena or making your own tailgate at home, Harris Teeter is where Tar Heel fans shop for groceries. And you can save big on your game day celebration just by joining EVIC. Sign up today and save hundreds of dollars per month. Harris Teeter, let's game day together. At Reed's Jewelers, we know that the rules of engagement were made to be broken. So don't settle for the first ring you see in the case. When you put a ring on it, make the moment your own with something that's just as unique as your love. Whether you're going big, keeping it subtle, or finding a happy medium, we're here to help you say I do with a one-of-a-kind design. Because doing things your way is what makes them mean everything. Reed's Jewelers, an official partner of Tar Heel Sports. Visit your local Reed's Jewelers in-store or online at reeds.com to chat with an expert. Carolina and Florida State had to take this 16-minute timeout a little earlier than normal due to a microphone malfunction underneath one of the baskets. Tar Heels leading 5-2 with 16.50 to play in the first half. After the game, we'll have our best in the game feature. That's brought to you by Old Dominion Freight Line. That's our player of the game. Old Dominion Freight Line works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. And we are brought to you in part by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina, official health insurance partner of Carolina Athletics, believes an inclusive community is a healthy community here for the Tar Heels, here for all. And we are here courtside in Washington, D.C. for Carolina, Florida State in the quarterfinal round of the ACC tournament. Heels lead this series all-time, 55-16. Tar Heels lead the ACC tournament series as well, 5-3. But Florida State's actually won three of the last four in the tournament that these two teams have played. Now we're going back a while. FSU's three wins are 9 12, and 21. Carolina won in 2013. Those are the last four times they've played in the ACC tournament. Florida State's second game of the event. They beat Virginia Tech in the second round yesterday. Tar Heels, as the top seed, earned a double bye, and this is their first action of the event. So it will be Florida State basketball, Carolina leading 5-2. Tar Heels picked up with a little pressure in the backboard. FSU able to break it, but, oh, Ingram almost got a steal once FSU got front side. He tipped away a pass, but it bounced right back into the hands of the Knolls. Corin on the perimeter to Worley on the left side. Jab step to the middle of the floor. Drives baseline. 
Sends it in the corner to Baba Miller, and he strips the net on the three. Miller has all five of Florida State's points. Really good drive there, drove baseline. We had to come over and help, which left Baba Miller open in the corner. He's just a 29% three-point shooter, but nothing but net on that one as Cadeau nearly turned it over. Heels going left to right as we see it here courtside in D.C. 5-5 five, five the score. Heels working hard to get it to Baycott. They finally do, but as he goes up to Duncan, he's stripped. Yeah, Florida State with those active hands able to strip it away from Baycott. Watkins front side for Florida State trying to back in against the smaller R.J. Davis on the left side. Kicks it out to Darren Green Jr. Open look for three is short off the front iron, then off the backboard. Rebound to R.J. Davis. Weaves through traffic. Davis still dribbling. Sends it right corner to Cormac Ryan, and he stepped out of bounds as he pumped and started to drive. So another turnover for the Tar Heels. That's their second back-to-back -back possessions that the Heels have turned it over. A little sloppy from Carolina offensively. Defensively, we look really good. Offense, you just got to clean it up, make simpler plays. Uh, but that's also what Florida State wants to do. 5-5 five, five the score, 15-40 to go first half. So remember, that 16-minute timeout's already occurred. So it's going to be a while until there's another full timeout here in D.C. Worley gets the screen from Corrin to drive left of the lane, but Cadeau recovers, forces him to send it back out near the timeline. Watkins has it now. He's going to elevate for a three over R.J. Davis. No good. Box out by Baycott for the rebound. Baycott's done a nice job on those defensive boards here early on. R.J. Davis has it knocked out of his hands by Jameer Watkins as he goes the other direction. That will prompt the first subs of the game as Ingram and Cadeau come out. Trimble and Withers come in. This has become a pretty regular sub here for Carolina at about the 15 and a half minute mark of the first half. They bring in Trimble and Withers for Cadeau and Ingram. And the Tar Heels will inbound now with Davis, Trimble, Ryan, Withers, and Baycott. Still 5-5 as Carolina works in the half court. Trimble has it to Baycott. His defender had fallen down. Baycott drives center of the lane, gets it to Withers, but Withers turns it over. Withers had an open look on the left side of the rim, but just couldn't cleanly handle the pass. A shot fake, they stripped him. A runner no good by Worley as he misses badly. Carolina with the rebound. Neither team shooting well. FSU 2 of 7, Carolina 2 of 6 as Trimble drives all the way through. Out to Withers. He'll send it back to R.J. Davis to reset. Carolina's turned it over on three straight possessions. R.J. Davis, crossover, drive, heavy contact, and has his shot blocked. Here comes Florida State the other way. Darren Green Jr. with a hand in his face. Three-pointer spins out. Withers with the rebound. Here comes Carolina the other way. Two teams are a combined four of 15. As the heels get it to Baycott in transition, he bodies his way to the rim for the left-handed layup. Great strong move by Armando. Catching the ball about the free throw line. One dribble really took the blow and able to finish with an easy left-handed layup. I'm telling you, there's a ton of contact mm -hmm. in this game. Not a lot of whistles. So far, in fact, there's not been a foul called in this game. They're letting them play. Florida State the other way. Corrin at the right elbow is able to score. First bucket for Corrin. First bucket for Florida State outside of Baba Miller. So Florida State had a bunch of chances to take the lead. Could never hit one. But after Carolina got up 7-5, Florida State answers with the tying jump shot. Jalen Washington comes to the scores table for Carolina. Trimble has it on the left sideline against Darren Green Jr. He'll pull up in the mid-range and hit nothing but net. And that's starting to become Trimble's shot. A couple dribbles if he can't get downhill, get to that elbow and knock it down. But Florida State is sagging heavily mm -hmm. off of a lot of Tar Heel players, most notably Trimble and Cadeau when he was out there. As Watkins drives left baseline, cut off there. Good defense by Carolina. Has to send it back out to Bob Bob Miller. Shot clock down to 12 as Corrin faces up on the right baseline. Baycott tips it away. Corrin able to get it. Shot clock under 10 now. Worley drives left of the lane, can't finish, but gets his own rebound and scores. Went right to the chest of Baycott, and Baycott challenged, but he couldn't foul him. Kind of fell out of the play, called right back to him. Game remains tied, 9-9, as Trimble turns it over. Lazy pass. Here come the Seminoles the other way. Worley able to finish high off the glass against Baycott. And that's what you can't do against Florida State. A little lazy post-entry pass leads to a layup on the other end. Yeah, Florida State's size is a, has affected Carolina here in the first seven and a half minutes as the Knolls lead 11-9. R.J. Davis, FSU, playing him tightly out there. It's Corrin on a switch. Davis fakes the step back. Corrin able to dance with him as Davis going to pull the string, pull up, and hit a mid-range jump shot. What a shot by Davis right of the lane. That was great defense. R.J. just had better offense. You know, a couple pullbacks and then finally just shot the fadeaway. 
Game tied at 11 as Worley heads the other way for Florida State. Hands off to Watkins. Clock at 12.03 first half. Baba Miller sends it back out. Watkins has it again. Collides with Trimble. Tries to drive. Has it knocked away. Recovers to Baba Miller. His three is an air ball. But the rebound bounces right to Watkins. And he puts it up and in. Trimble trying to block out on the weak side. Just lost his balance. Kind of fell down. Which led to Watkins getting the rebound. There still has not been a foul called in this game. 13-11 as Baycott rumbling to the rim and hammers it home with two hands on the right baseline. Strong finish by Baycott, really rolling to the basket hard and just finished over two guys challenging him. Ties it up at 13. Watkins bumped by Ryan, able to get into the paint and can't finish. Baba Miller tipped it while it was hanging on the rim. That will be an offensive interference, so no basket by Florida State as Miller just couldn't keep his hands off of it. It was so enticing hanging <laughs> up there on the iron. Well, what a physical, fast game this has been. What it has not been is a single whistle between the 1650 mark and the 1123 mark. Not a single stoppage of play. There's not been one stoppage of play outside of the microphone falling off the backboard a little bit earlier. 13-13, the score, 11-23 to go. First half in D.C. Carolina will have the ball when we return from Learfield. For any surface and every season, Continental Tire is the smart choice in tires. From ultra-high performance tires like the Extreme Contact Sport to passenger touring tires to all-terrain light truck tires like the Terrain Contact AT, Continental has a tire that gives you confidence no matter the road conditions. Whether you're looking for summer, all-season, or winter tires, Continental Tire has something to fit your needs. Visit ContinentalTire.com to find your ideal tire. Continental Tire, a proud partner of Carolina Athletics. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Every day in the U.S., more than nine people are killed and 1,000 injured in crashes involving a distracted driver. You can't control other motorists, but you can control how you operate your vehicle. Avoid distractions while driving, like texting or checking social media. You can't drive safely unless driving has your full attention. Any non-driving activity you engage in increases your risk of crashing. Brought to you by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents of North Carolina. Learn more at trustedchoice.com slash heels. Coverage of the ACC Tournament is presented by Honda Dealers of the Carolinas. If you're a Tar Heel fan, don't just cheer for the best, drive the best. Drive a Honda. Better hurry, they're going fast. See your Honda Dealer of the Carolinas today. 11 minutes, 23 seconds to play, first half. Tied at 13 between Carolina and Florida State. For more than 25 years, Top of the Hill Restaurant and Brewery has been a pre- and post-game tradition in Chapel Hill with handcrafted beer, great food, and atmosphere. It's where Tar Heels come to celebrate. Let's take a look at some of these Lenovo stats, a global technology leader that has called North Carolina home since 2005. Lenovo has smarter technology for all. You can visit their website, Lenovo.com. Carolina's up now above 50% shooting, 6 of 11 from the field, 1 of 3 from 3, but 4 turnovers early for Carolina. Florida State has ticked up its shooting, too, 6 of 15, 40%, 1 of 5 from 3. The Knolls have turned it over twice as well. So, Z, not a single foul called so far. Um, turnovers have been an issue here early for Carolina. A couple of the storylines here early in this Yeah, one. definitely. And, you know, there's been plenty of contact. So it's not yeah. like there is, a, you know, there's been a lot of places you could have called fouls, but they're letting them play, which, you know, benefits Florida State. They do a great job being physical, getting into people. And uh, it'll be really interesting as this game progresses as if they start to call that or if this is just the way it's going to be all night. Florida State has brought in Primo Spears, Jalen Ganey, and also Taylor Bo Bowen off the bench. Carolina has Cadeau Trimble, 
Withers, Ingram, and Jalen Washington in the game. It's Withers driving right of the lane. He stopped there, kicks it out to Cadeau. Hard drive into the paint and scoops it in with the left hand. What a strong finish by the youngster. Great athleticism. Went up, kind of came back down with a little, you know, a little razzle-dazzle and finished with the left hand. Even when teams sag off of him, he's able to get to the rim pretty frequently. Primo Spears misses a two-point jumper left of the lane. Withers way up in the air for the rebound for Carolina. Cadeau chased him on the baseline, took a bad route, lost him. Fortunately for the Heels, shot didn't go in. They're leading 15-13 and have the basketball. So Baycott and R.J. Davis on the bench right now for the Tar Heels. Cadeau drifts out to the right side. He's been dribbling a bunch. Oh, what a back door to Withers. He hung on the rim, though, because he missed the dunk. Hung on the rim. It went in. But he hung on the rim too long to coax the ball in, so the basket won't count. Yeah, you can't hold on to the rim when you dunk it. you got to let go of it. Unfortunately, it usually doesn't matter, but unfortunately this situation it did. Well, he cut down the center of the lane. It was a gorgeous pass oh by Cadeau. I mean, that was a highlight waiting to happen, but the ball just wouldn't stay in. Watkins barrels into the paint, knocks over Withers, sends it out to Bull Bowen, and he hits a three. And now a Florida State player is down. Jameer Watkins in the middle of the floor. And the officials stop the action. Bull Bowen had been 6 of 30 from three-point range in the regular season and 0 of 2 in this event. Shot that one with confidence. Yeah, he wide did. open. You know, Withers tried to take a charge. He was guarding him and fell down. He was wide open. Running down the court, Ingram was just trying to run. They got tangled up, ended up falling over. So nothing malicious, just two guys trying to compete. Pressure from Florida State. Carolina is able to get it into Ingram, who quickly hands to Cadeau. So Florida State has the lead now as Cadeau, Eurostep, leads it to Washington, who lays it over the left side of the rim. Great play by Cadeau getting up the floor. Uh, Ingram did a great job setting a screen as he was coming up, and then with uh, Washington did a great job getting to the rim for the drop-off. 17-16, Carolina by one. Cadeau playing a big role here early. Long two-pointers off the back iron. Once, twice, no good for Florida State. Ingram way up in the air for the board. He'll push it the other way. Right down the center of the lane. Takes contact. Can't finish. Rebound knocked out by Florida State, though. So Tar Heels will have it with 9.25 to go. I, I may have said take contact, can't finish, or take contact, no whistle. There's not been a foul called in this game. How's that even possible? 9.25 to play. There's been a few dunks that some arm slapping has yeah. happened. and um, But, you know, it is what it is. You know, there Ingram does a great job pushing it. Uh, Withers did a great job trying to get to the rebound. Cadeau will inbound, has to send it into the backcourt. Ingram able to go get it. Now to Trimble, he'll hand off to Cadeau, middle of the floor. Heels up one with the basketball. Cadeau dancing through, back door to Withers, up and there under, and finally a whistle as he is <laughs> slammed into as he tried to finish. Boy, one thing Withers has been really good at all year is the fouls on Corrin, his first. He just has a very uh, instinctual knack mm. of when to cut off the ball. And he did it there. He did it on the missed dunk, which was a great play. But he does, he does and really, he as soon as his guy looked at Cadeau on the drive, he turned his head. Withers was gone in the baseline, and Cadeau, such a good passer, dropped it right to him and really had a, a good chance of finishing that. Just got slapped across the arm. And then the first free throw rolls off. Withers, an 81% shooter. He had been 39 of 48 on the season. R.J. Davis going to come in. He'll replace Trimble. So the Heels will have Cadeau, Davis, Withers, Ingram, and Washington as the five on the floor. You know, Withers still looking Z for his first point of Florida the day. Florida State's done a great job today. They switch everything, but really have done a good job keeping the ball out of the post. Withers goes one of two, and it's 18-16 Carolina, 9-10 to go first half. Worley on the left sideline in the front court for the Seminoles as Baycott comes off the bench. Looks like he'll get back into the action at the next dead ball. Watkins dribbling between the circles. Pushes it in the left corner to Worley. Worley trying to just physicality his way into the paint. Throws it off the rim no, or off the backboard. No good. Bodies from both teams on the floor. It's still loose, and it will be a shot clock violation. And that's a benefit for Carolina because while the arrow does belong to the heels, they keep that possession arrow and end up getting the turnover instead on the violation. 
So Carolina will have the basketball. Great hustle by everybody there. I think we had <laughs> Withers, Washington, uh, Cadeau all fighting for the ball, ended up on the floor. There's, I don't know, three or four. four Ingram State guys was in, in the too. mix, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Everybody there. So awesome to see the hustle, everybody getting on the floor. Florida State, again, just making Carolina work to get the ball in. And then once the heels do, they back off. 18-16, Carolina, 8.35 to go first half. Withers. Giving Carolina a bunch of minutes here off the bench, spinning into the paint, and he's fouled by Bull Bowen. Bull Bowen had gotten just tangled up with Baycott, and he actually fouled him with his backside. He had ended up with his back yeah. to the play and just ran into Withers, who was spinning into the paint. He was trying to front Baycott, and really I don't even know if he knew Ingram or uh, Withers was coming down his back when he spun. He just ran into him. Cadeau, long inbounds out to Ingram. As Carolina will set up the offense with a two-point lead. R.J. Davis with the ball in his hands right now. Guarded by Watkins. Now a switch has Bull Bowen on. Davis dancing with the basketball. Hesitation behind the back. Pump fake. Step through. Throws it up. And he's fouled. And that's going to be two fouls on Bull Bowen. So third on FSU. Davis to the line. See, we've seen R.J. That's twice now that he's gotten a bigger player on him out on the perimeter. And he just starts... Doing everything. He's got some handle now, and he starts showing it off and made a bucket, and now we're into foul. He did, and he really just took one hard dribble to the right, a little pullback dribble, and that's when he shot last time for the little fadeaway. So he gave a little head fake, flew by, tried to step through, and on the step through, uh, Bo- he got grabbed. Bo Bowen's continuing to hold his side as R.J. Davis to the free throw line. I think First one rattles in. From when he ran in, Withers ran into him. Yeah. I, I think he just wasn't prepared for it. Kind of, He got hit pretty hard, but... I think it's one of those kind of shell-shocking, you relax and just don't see it coming. Yeah, he's going to kind of gingerly walk to the bench with those two fouls as Baba Miller comes back in. So first free throw good by R.J. Davis, 19-16. Second one's up, and that one's good too. So Davis has six. He's the leading scorer, and Carolina leads by four, 2016. Primo Spears, the Georgetown transfer. This is where Georgetown plays its home game. Brings it front side. Ends up in Watkins' hands. He's going to drive right of the lane, and he'll have a chance for three as Harrison Ingram called for the foul. That foul, we've seen a lot more contact than what occurred right there, but that one was earned by Leonard Hamilton. He complained the entire time R.J. Davis was on the free throw line to the officials, and Ingram called for the first foul on Carolina on the other side, and it will give Watkins a three-point play opportunity after this timeout. So, Carolina briefly led by four in what's been a tight game. It's back down to two, and Watkins can make it one with the free throw when we return. 2018 the score, right at eight minutes to go, first half in D.C. from Learfield. You cheer for Tar Heels on the field. You cheer for Tar Heels on the court. But during Give UNC, you can cheer for Tar Heels everywhere. On March 26th, your gift to Carolina will support a place like no other on a day like no other. So cheer on the Tar Heels by visiting giveunc.unc.edu. That's giveunc.unc.edu. Together, we'll make this Give UNC a day like no other. This is the Tar Heels Sports Network from Learfield. It's bow time. Sometimes the craving for Bojangles Supremes is so strong you just gotta have them. Even when your gas tank is on empty and Bojangles is still 10 miles down the highway. Nothing beats the flavor of Bojangles Juicy Golden Supremes, especially when they're part of a perfect combo with four boldly seasoned chicken Supremes, a made from scratch biscuit, fixin', and some legendary iced tea. The only thing that can satisfy your hunger is that delicious southern flavor. So when the craving is supreme, put the pedal to the metal. It's bow time. Together, that's how we stay in the game, ready to play. As one great team, UNC Health is keeping you well by bringing renewed focus, approach, and dedicated services close to you. Exceptional care is what you and your family deserve. Together, let's put points on the board for life well played. Team up with UNC Health, proud partner of Carolina Athletics. Tar Heels 20, Florida State 18, eight minutes to go first half. Food Lion, proud to sponsor the score to get more program. 
for each free throw the Tar Heels make in today's game. Food Lion Feeds will donate 100 meals to a local area food bank. Again, that score on the North Carolina Farm Bureau scoreboard. Heels 20, Knowles 18. Farm Bureau Insurance helping you is what they do best. You know, Carolina, six of its last eight from the field, three or four free throws in that time span as well, but hasn't added to its lead at all in that that time frame is six minutes and 12 seconds and the reason for that is twofold one turnovers heels are up to five turnovers now so they're having some empty possessions in there as well and florida state has had a couple second chance opportunities they have four second chance points on some good looks after misses here in the last couple of minutes in total though z it's 2018 carolina although watkins will be at the free throw line to try and complete a three-point play here when action resumes. Yeah, I think we're doing a great job keeping them out of the paint. You know, they got 10 points in there, but we're really focused on trying to keep them out of there. The, the challenge with that is we've given up those two wide-open threes that they've made uh, from somewhat decent three-point shooters, not their hot guys. But, um, you know, we have given up two threes already to a team that doesn't usually historically make a lot of them. Yeah, FSU comes in averaging a little more than six made threes per game. That's 14th in the 15-team ACC. They made just three in the win over Virginia Tech yesterday. The Knowles were three of 13 from three-point range. We're doing a good job on Watkins, though. Watkins yesterday did a great job elevating over um, some of the Virginia Tech guys and being able to get shots off. So far, he hasn't looked comfortable. Uh, Got a big bucket here for this free throw, but uh, doing a great job just trying to keep him contained. Watkins does have three assists to go along with his four points. Now five points as he makes the free throw. He is going to check out for the first time as Chandler Jackson, a sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee. He had 10 points in the second game against Carolina this year. Comes in. A little diamond and one press uh, that goes into man-to-man, just trying to keep us from getting it in easy and getting it up. Heels do get it into Ryan. Now to Cadeau. Quickly to Baycott right down the center of the lane for the flush. Great draw up by Coach. They saw that they were overhelping up on the high side for the pick and roll. So Armando was able to cut right to the basket with nobody behind him. Heels up 22-19 now. After Baycott's dunk, he has six points. He and R.J. Davis each with six to lead the Tar Heels scoring. Baba Miller stripped by Cadeau off the ball, but Florida State finds the loose ball. So they'll keep going here with seven on the shot clock. Primo Spears, though, turns it over. Got caught in the air and lost the ball as Cadeau the other way. Oh, my goodness. He started on the left and finished on the right. I don't know how, but he gets two more. He could just hang up there when he gets going, but really Cadeau showing his speed off in transition and able to fly up the court. 24-19, largest early lead here by Carolina of five points. Primo Spears going to force a two, and he knocked it in. Tough shot, guarded long two. And Spears, that's what Spears does. He's able to knock down shots, able to do a one dribble pull up there. Tough shot. you got to live with it. But uh, one of those guys you don't want to get going. Cadeau can take a screen either way. Drifts to the left. Now to Ingram, top of the key. Looking down low for Baycott. Doesn't give it to him. Now he does. And Baycott, well, that's, that, ball that, went went off, yeah. that, that ball went off the backboard and was blocked but was not called a goaltend. Florida State the other way. Misses a three. And Carolina gets the rebound. I don't know how that was not a goaltend on Baycott's shot. I agree. And a foul is called as the Heels work it into Baycott on the other side as Corin is called for the foul. Baycott doing a great job running the floor. Really, I think it's one thing this year he's done better than uh, any other year he's done, being able to get down the court, keep up with our guards, and be able to get to the post for an inside presence. I'm going to tell you, that finishing transition by Cadeau, he took off at about mid-lane left and finished on the right side. Heels try to get, boy, they had R.J. Davis cutting. Cormac Ryan trying to get it to him on the inbound, but Baba Miller kicked it away. That saved an easy bucket for the Tar Heels. Or defensively saved it for Florida State, what would have been an easy bucket for the Tar Heels. Still 24-21. Cadeau gets it in the right corner to Ingram. He's going to back in against Spears one-on-one. Gets into the paint, lost the ball, gets it back, though. Still 15 on the shot clock. Ingram's going to try again. Goes to his strong side. Can't get the hook shot to go, but he does draw the foul on Primo Spears, his first. And Spears really just isn't big enough to guard uh, Ingram in there. Coach Davis doing a great job calling a play where they're going to switch. He knew they would switch, so he ran Ingram to that spot uh, and able to get a one-on-one post up against a smaller guy. The officials, I'm thinking here, Z, if the officials can review that goaltend at the next dead or at the next timeout, 
I think they have to call a Golton on the floor to be able to review it as Ingram's free throw is good. I think you're right. I, I don't, don't think remember they, they can, can review this yeah. since they didn't call it on the floor. And I didn't see any sign or anything no. that they would try. It pretty, looked pretty obvious. Though. I Baycott, thought it was clear. Baycott got it up off the board, and uh, I think Baba Miller hit it up against there again. But the referee, if they're not in the right angle, it's really hard to see. Ingram gets both free throws. Got front iron backboarding in on a flat free throw on the second one. So the heel's up 5, 26, 21. Primo Spears gets open left of the lane and knocks it in. Cormac Ryan just got caught in traffic off the ball. And Florida State doing a great job setting screens. That one might even have been moving, but phenomenal screen. Sack cuts it back to a three-point Tario lead at 26-23. Jalen Ganey has come in to guard Baycott in the post because Corrin's foul a moment ago was his second. R.J. Davis behind the back dribble, long two, no good. Baycott the offensive rebound in heavy traffic. He's fighting for the ball and has it taken away. Tried to dribble inside. But Too many people around. The Tar Heels, well, they had it back. Yes, they do. Cadeau knocks it free in the backcourt, and then a foul is called on Florida State. So Carolina knocked the We were shielded off. Yeah. Cadeau knocked the ball away from Baba Miller in the backcourt, and then Miller fouled him. So that's the sixth team foul on Baba Miller or on uh, Florida State. Yeah. The first Baba Miller's big enough to be a team by himself, <laughs> but that's his first. So Carolina's going to get the ball back after that sequence. Still leading 26-23 with 12.30, or excuse me, with 5.34 to go in the first half. Yeah, Cadeau doing a great job there, seeing Baba Miller, a big guy, bringing the ball to court. Uh, tried to run through, got the ball, and then Baba Miller going down, grabbed him uh, for the foul. Inbounds goes to Cadeau. Still dribbling between the circles as Carolina has a lot of movement off the ball. Cadeau's just going to go against Ganey. Can't get it to drop, but Ingram pokes it in with the right hand. And that's where Cadeau has to take advantage. They're putting their center on Cadeau, knowing they're going to switch the first pick and roll. He's got to take advantage of that early. Baba Miller front side for FSU over to Primo Spears, who has the last couple of buckets for the Seminoles. Florida State works it around the perimeter, ends up in the right corner to Worley. Out to Ganey. The big man looking for some help. Back over to Spears. Shot clock down to 10. Heels up by 5, 28-23. Spears on the drive. Tries to get it middle of the lane to Ganey. Cadeau dives on the floor for the loose ball. It is going Great. to be unbelievable. Cadeau ran all the way across the court. He was on the other side of the lane when that ball got loose. Used his speed. Able to come out to the three-point line. And I think it's a jump ball. Yeah, I think they have called jump ball and possession to Carolina. What an effort yeah. by Cadeau. He's going to go to the bench for a few. It has been a terrific first half for the freshman guard for the Eels. And I actually think he's only going to the bench because his knee's bleeding. So Trimble's going to come in. We have seen Cadeau lay his body on the line a couple of times. Really, at the beginning of the year, Coach Davis asked for a little more effort on those type of plays from Cadeau, and he has answered that call. Yeah, that, that play was incredible. He had, he had no business even being involved, let alone getting the ball. Cormac Ryan has a jab step, drives to the free throw line, falls down on his shot and gets it to roll in. I'm not sure how why he fell down, but he was able to make the shot. I think he may have stepped on a foot or something, but a little step through, uh, able to knock down the shot. Heels up seven now, 30-23. to 23. Darren Green Jr. came off the ball, misses a three, though. Trimble with the rebound. Tariel's up seven and on the run. Trimble to a trailing Baycott through traffic. Can't get it to go, but he is going to go to the free throw line. And Trimble, really good job. Ingram running the floor opposite, able to draw the first defender. Baycott followed right behind and able to get to the rim for a foul. Foul called on Watkins, his first. Seventh on Florida State, so heels in the bonus, but this will be two shots for Baycott as he was shooting in transition. And Florida State on the other end, running this play where they put their shooter in the far corner, uh, running in baseline off two screens, and then trying to get him to come out the other side. And some of our guys have been behind. Uh, thankfully, they haven't made a lot of them yet. Baycott gets the roll on the free throw. Deontay Green, sophomore from Asheville, is going to check in. He has not played the last two games for Florida State. The regular season finale against Miami or the ACC tournament matchup with Virginia Tech. He had only played four total minutes in the two games before that. He was in the lane early right there, too, but <laughs> Baycott makes the free throw, so it doesn't matter. Baycott up to eight. Tar Heels have scored on 14 of the 16 possessions that they didn't turn the ball over, 
And they lead it by 9, 32-23. Tough turnaround for Watkins is no good. Late whistle, A.J. Desai is going to call the foul on Cormac Ryan for hitting Watkins' elbow on the turnaround. Just the second foul on Carolina and first on Ryan. It will put Watkins, who's shot the only free throw for Florida State so far, which he made, to the line for two opportunities this time. 4.04 to go Z. First half, heels up 32-23. Tough foul on Ryan there. Really did a great job absorbing the contact on the left-handed drive. When he spun back, he stepped up just a little bit too much and hit him on the elbow. Free throw's good. Cadeau is still at the end of the Tar Heel bench getting some attention. He, uh, I noticed on his white tights he had blood on his knee, so I'm assuming they got some kind of bandage or something. They're trying to figure out how to get it to stop bleeding. They got this great stuff that makes it stop pretty quickly, so I don't know why it's taking this long, but um, I'm sure he'll get it figured out soon. Doug Halverson, Jonas Serration, the head trainer, and then strength coach for Carolina, both talking to Cadeau as Watkins makes both free throws. So it is 32-25, Carolina by seven. They briefly led by nine as the inbounds goes to Trimble, and again, Florida State eases up once the heels get an inbound. Davis Trimble. Ryan Ingram Baycott, five on the floor for Carolina. 350 to go first half. Heels up seven. They briefly led by nine. Davis out in the middle of the floor against Watkins. Loops a low bounce pass to Baycott. Baycott in a fight down there, and I think a foul is called on Deontay Green as Baycott was trying to pick up the loose ball. He did, but while that ball was on the ground, it was like sharks to yeah. bloody water. The Seminoles just surrounded him, but Green just got a little too handsy down there. Green, and, Green had both hands wrapped around him. Yeah, it's, that'll get you a foul most places. <laughs> That's the first on Green, but eighth on Florida State. So Baycott will have a one-and-one one when action resumes. 3.42 to go first half. Heels 32, Knowles 25 from Learfield. North Carolina's 26 electric cooperatives are partnering with outstanding educators to bring creative learning to life through the Bright Ideas Grant Program. These grants have positively impacted millions of students in all 100 counties in the Tar Heel State. Grant applications will open April 1st. Teachers, if you have a bright idea for energizing learning in your classroom, apply now by contacting your local electric cooperative or visiting ncbrightideas.com. North Carolina Electric Cooperatives, powering a brighter future. This is Carolina Basketball from Learfield. Some people like A and others like B. At BMW, we prefer X. Like the dynamic X3, meant for ultimate exploration. The X5, built to conquer even the most difficult paths, or the pinnacle of comfort and luxury, the X7. And since every X-Range vehicle is packed with performance and versatility, you'll always get the best of X. The BMW X-Range. Your next X-Venture starts here. Take advantage of exceptional offers on the BMW X3 and X5. Visit TriangleBMWDealers.com today. You are the co-pilot. You go by many names, and Marathon knows how important you are to your team. You are the carpool driver, the assistant coach, keeper of the shoulder pads, the knee pads, and the helmets. The back of your car looks like a sporting goods store. You are the top dog at the tailgate. The ride there, the ride home, and in between, you are the biggest fan. This season and every season, Marathon is proud to fuel you and your team because we're driven together. Armando Baycott will be at the free throw line for a one and one when action resumes. Three minutes and 42 seconds to play in the first half. First game of quarterfinal Thursday in the ACC tournament here in Washington, D.C. Carolina leads 32-25 over Florida State. 3.42 to go before the half. Good Feet Store. Proud to sponsor Carolina basketball. If you have foot, knee, hip, or back pain, Good Feet Arch supports our engineer to support all four arches to provide pain relief, balance, and comfort. Try them for yourself. Book your free fitting today at goodfeet.com. And Z, obviously still a long way to go. I, I was a little curious to see if Carolina would be sleepy at the beginning of this game. You know, I hadn't played in a while, had that emotional win on, on Saturday, an early game against a team that's already played, but maybe a little sloppy yeah. right at the beginning, but feels like Carolina doesn't guarantee a win, but it feels like right. Carolina is engaged. In I its, agree. In its I think play. the first few minutes we were a little sloppy on offense. Defensively, we've looked good all night. Offensively, a little sloppy. Had those three early turnovers, but 
just look at this. We forced six turnovers and had 13 points off those. And we have we have six turnovers ourselves also, but they haven't been turnovers that have been bad where they've been able to score easy. So uh, really a good start and really all you can ask for after being off for a few days. So Cadeau remains on the bench. He has moved back up towards the coaches as Baycott's free throw is good. So he'll get the back half of the one and one Baycott quietly having a solid first half here. He's up to nine points and four rebounds. He leads the Tar Heels in both those categories. And I will say, Coach Davis always says this, they haven't been off, they just haven't had a game. <laughs> That's right. Both free throws good by Baycott. So he's in the double figures now for the 23rd time this year and just the 122nd time in his Carolina career. 34-29, heels by nine. Watkins trying to work on Trimble. Ends up to Deontay Green just barreling into the paint. His turnaround good. Tough shot left of the lane by Deontay Green. And he's a good player. He's somebody I've had a lot of time recently, hasn't played as well, but that's a really hard shot to be able to get downhill and fade away and hit that shot over a very hard challenge. Carolina gets it in against the pressure to Cormac Ryan. Now to Trimble. Trimble comes all the way down the floor. Florida State fell down. Ends up to an open look for three for Ingram. No good, but Baycott slaps it out to Ingram. Now he'll defer over to Ryan for the triple, which is good. Great job. The whole play there. Trimble, uh, Baycott sealing his man. Trimble driving, able to run into those two guys and then hitting out for just hustle plays. Watkins on the sideline for Florida State. Tar Heels have their largest lead of 10. That's just the fourth, make it fifth attempt by Carolina from three. The Heels are two of five here early on. Darren Green, Jr., Wraps around, has it taken away by R.J. Davis. Davis is going to have a run-out layup from the right side. Heels up 12. Great job by R.J. Just being in the right place, right time. You know, jabbed at the ball and able to get it for a layup. And timeout, Florida State, as the Tar Heels have taken a 39-27 lead. That is, Z just told you about those turnovers. That's now seven turnovers for Florida State. And Carolina not only turning them over, but making those turnovers count. 15 points off the seven Florida State turnovers thus far. So 39-27 Carolina with 2.33 to play here in the first half. Some of the Lenovo stats brought to you by Lenovo, smarter technology for all. Individual numbers, Baycott 10 points, five rebounds. R.J. Davis has eight, three assists, and two rebounds. Harrison Ingram, 7-5 for Ryan. Cadeau with four points and two assists. Also points for Trimble with two. Washington with two. Withers with one. Florida State's being led by Watkins, who has seven. Baba Miller with five. Carolina missed its first four shots of the game. The Heels are 14 of 21 since. And a big reason why, it's layups and dunks. I mean, and or open threes. Open threes yeah. Carolina's gotten really good looks. We're for the most part. Pushing that pace really fast, trying to get it up the floor. And, you know, Cadeau's stat line isn't impressive, but he's been a game changer. He's for been so one of the most yeah. important players on the floor when he's been out there, and he is back out there as he replaces Trimble. So the Heels have their starting five on the floor. Carolina up 12, 39, 27. Darren Green Jr. has it on the left wing for Florida State. Drives into the lane, or right outside the lane. Kicks it back up top to Deontay Green. Right back to Darren Green Jr. Guarded long two. Just tips the front of the iron. Great defense Great. as the rebound goes to Ryan. Heels pushing the pace. RJ pulls up transition triple. Yes, sir! And that's a dagger for RJ to be able to hit that three. Going on a little run here in transition. Pull up three. Take it from 12 to 15. Tario's on an 8-0 run to lead it 42-27. Watkins other side. Goes middle of the floor to Baba Miller. Drives right of the lane. Picks up that dribble. Now he's in a little bit of trouble. He's still holding the ball. Finally sends it out to the timeline to Deontay Green. Shot clock down to 10. Worley has it now on the left sideline. Crossover against Cadeau. Goes all the way through. He's caught there. Out to Watkins. His three is no good. Ingram with a good box out. And Baba Miller's just running over the back of Ingram. And finally they blow the whistle and call the foul. And Cadeau got run over too. I don't know by who, but somebody. And Coach Davis is mad because they're, I mean, they were. They pushed pretty hard there and had two people get run over. So the fouls on Miller, that's his second. Hubert Davis is indeed fired up. Glasses off and upset. He looks like he can fight somebody right now. Yeah, Ingram keeps flexing out his right leg. I think, I don't know if maybe Miller stepped on that Achilles area. That's a total guess by me. Um, but he does look like he is a little sore, as now A.J. Desai is going to go to the monitor. Hubert Davis wanted them to. I, I, 
We were shielded a bit by what happened to Cadeau. That was a short review. So, it, well, maybe they're taking a longer look. What are we doing here? Well, while the officials go to the monitor, I reminder that it's brought to you by the Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Take your Tariel tailgate to the next level with a new Honda. See your Honda dealer of the Carolinas today. Well, so they were reviewing. Cadeau got run over, and it looked a lot worse watching the replay. You know, he got run over, but it wasn't, I mean, he kind of grabbed him, too. It was yeah. a little bit two guys fighting and just fell over. Okay, so after all that, now the, the teams briefly thought they were going to their benches. Now they're coming back. They just said this is a two-shot foul, but I think this should be a one-and-one one for Ingram. And it doesn't matter as he gets the friendly roll. I hesitate to tell you this, Z. Ingram's now 12 of his last 13 at the free Ooh. throw line. 90 seconds to go first half. Heels up 43-27. Carolina here has done a great job closing this half out. we got a minute and a half left. We need to keep it, keep it up. But great ah. keep it up. Harrison Ingram. He's able to knock it down even so. Then he turns and points at me and gives me, no, he didn't do that part. But he did knock in the free throw to give Carolina now a 17-point lead. It's a 10-0 Tar Heel run. Worley, top of the key for Florida State. Cormac Ryan giving him a little space. Worley drifts to the left side with the dribble. Hands off to Watkins. Shot clock down to 12. Watkins trying to find something left of the lane. Picks up his dribble. Almost dragged the pivot foot. Has to go all the way out to Darren Green, Jr. Green, shot clock down to four. Back out to Watkins. Shot clock down to two as Watkins barrels into the paint. Lost the ball. It's another violation. This is a clinic in the first half for the Tar Heels. That was impressive. Every time that Florida State drove, every time they tried to do anything, there was two, at, at least two guys waiting for him. And really the last play there, they were able to block it, knock it away. Really, really hard uh, and really, really good defense. Hard on uh, Florida State to be able to create anything. Lee Cassell just gave a bench warning to Leonard Hamilton, and the only reason he didn't get a technical foul is that it's his 21st year in the ACC <laughs> and 35th year coaching. He was almost, say he was steps onto the floor and well out of the coach's box there. He wanted a foul there at the end. I think they were straight up and down. Good no call. Carolina up 44-27. Baycock bodying in against Deontay Green. Goes around him. Oh, he missed the layup. It spun out, but there's Ingram for the offensive board. Out to Godot. Crosses the floor to Ryan. Catch and shoot. Triple. You almost. But it spun out. Baycott, the offensive rebound. Loses it. Ryan can't finish. Ingram out of there with it. Still 14 on the shot clock. Ingram shoots. He can't score. Baycott has it again. Put wow. it in, big fella. The possession lasted as long as Congress has been in session. <laughs> Great job by everybody, really. Really just battling on the boards, trying to get after every loose ball. Doing a great job. Ryan, uh, Ingram, Baycott all battling inside, getting rebounds. Baycott just controlling everything in there. 46-27. Trimble in for Cadeau. Withers is going to replace Ingram. I can't even tell you. I mean, I'm not even sure how many rebounds the Tar Heels had on that possession. I mean, at one point, Ryan threw it off the backboard to Ingram. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that counts as a rebound or not. But a uh, really great job uh, just competing and playing hard. 15.3 to go as the Tar Heels lead it by 19, 46-27. It's a 12-0 Tar Heel run. Florida State can hold for the final shot. And a foul is going to be called as Withers kind of stumbled a bit as he was trying to stay in front of the driving Worley. That is the first foul on Withers. Just the third on Carolina. I think we were trying to foul him, actually, though, because we got fouls to give. First downhill drive, they were trying to foul, uh, make it difficult on him. 6.8 seconds to go. They may do it again here. Primo Spears gets it in the left corner to Watkins. Baycott guarding him on a switch. Watkins. Two seconds to go. Crosses the court to Spears. His three is good at the buzzer. So Florida State stops that 12-0 run with a three-pointer right before halftime. But Carolina still owns a sizable advantage going into the locker room. 46-30. Carolina leads by 16 going to the break. The Tar Heels scored on 18 of their last 21 possessions of the half. The officials are going to the monitor, so I'm guessing this may be to check a two or a th well, they, yeah, they, that was quick. Well, whatever it was, they are done checking it, so a fast check before they go into their locker room at the break. Tar Heels led by as many as 19. The three at the buzzer cuts it to 16. Heels up 46-30 at halftime from Learfield. 
They're not just the Tar Heels, they're your Tar Heels. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today to show your Carolina pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Tar Heels. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official bank of Carolina Athletics. Copyright 2023. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. Jeff, I'm standing courtside where this team is about to celebrate a staggering win here in the fourth quarter. I just spoke with the team captain, who told me they owe it all to Kohl's, where fans found the license gear, game day hosting fines, and other essentials they needed to rally this team to victory. He said, quote, great brands, great prices. Discover it all at Kohl's and Kohl's.com. Back to you. This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. Hello, Tar Heels. This is Jeff Denny. I played on championship teams for Coach Dean Smith, and now I've partnered with former teammate Pete Chilcutt to build another winning team at Generator Supercenter, serving you in the Triangle, Triad, and Central North Carolina with the number one residential partner for Generac in North America. We offer sales, installation, and service with a Generac whole home backup generator, so your power will never go out. Go to GeneratorSupercenterOfTheTriangle.com for the game plan. That's GeneratorSupercenterOfTheTriangle.com. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Big first half for the Tar Heels, who lead Florida State 46-30 at the break. This is the Wells Fargo Halftime Show. Dave Nathan with you from our Tar Heel Sports Network studios as Carolina leads FSU by 16 at intermission. We've got ultimate halftime highlights and a look at first-half stats coming up. But right now, it's the North Carolina Farm Bureau scoreboard. Helping you is what they do best. Our matchup going on right now, the first of four games in Washington, D.C. today. The second game should be tipping off in about an hour and a half. Pittsburgh and Wake Forest, it's the four-seed Pitt and the five-seed Wake matching up for a spot against the winner of our game tomorrow at 7 o'clock. And then in the second session, later this evening at 7 o'clock, the second seed, Duke, battles NC State. The pack, the 10 seed, have gotten by Louisville and Syracuse to get into the quarters. Final game of the night at 9.30, pits the three seed, Virginia, against the 11 seed, Boston College. The Eagles have also won their way past Miami and Clemson to get a shot at the Cavaliers. So that's what's happening at the ACC tournament. Elsewhere, a couple of games in progress. Number two, UConn leading Xavier 34-33 at the break from the Big East quarters and midway through the first half at the Big 12 tournament. Number 25, Texas Tech out quickly and leading number 20, BYU 25-11. to At 3 o'clock, it's the top-ranked team in the country, Houston, battling TCU. Another 3 o'clock tilt pits USC versus number 6, Arizona. A pair of 7 o'clock games, number 7, Iowa State versus Kansas State. And Providence takes on number 8, Creighton. Late one at 9.30, it's Villanova and number 10, Marquette. Another 9.30 game from the Big 12, Cincinnati and number 14, Baylor. At 3.30 in the SEC, Arkansas tries to handle number 15, South Carolina. Number 18, Utah State tries to tackle Fresno State. That's a 3 o'clock tip. Two more 9 o'clock games out west. Stanford at number 22, Washington State. Colorado State at number 23, Nevada. And at 7.30 near the bottom of the top 25, it's number 24, Dayton versus Duquesne. It's number 4, Carolina, leading Florida State by 16 points at the half, 46-30. to 30. And as we hit the top of the hour, let's pause 10 seconds for a station ID on the Tar Heel Sports Network. Carolina 46, Florida State 30. That's our score at the half. We've got ultimate halftime highlights when we come back from Learfield. 
What does Carolina basketball have in common with the Honda Accord? More trophies than Duke. The award-winning 2023 Honda Accord, named to Car and Driver's 10 Best List a record 37 times. Part of Honda's impressive full lineup. Accord, Civic, CRV, HRV, Pilot, Passport, Odyssey, and Ridgeline. With available Honda Sensing, Apple CarPlay, and more. Because winning fans deserve a winning car. Find one now at your Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Once you get the meat and cheese for your sub freshly sliced right in front of you at Jersey Mike's, I'll tell you, there's no going back to anything else. That'd be like going back to dial-up internet. Ugh. Am I connecting to space to order Jersey Mike's? Any day now. Okay, it's about to connect. What? Well, who picked up the phone? Nope. There's no going back once you see it freshly sliced at Jersey Mike's. A sub above. This is Carolina Basketball from Learfield. Hey, Tar Heel fans, this is Hubert Davis, head men's basketball coach at the University of North Carolina. Carolina fans are the best in the nation, and I'm so thankful for your support. Just like our team relies on solid fundamentals, you need the right foundation for your feet. And that's where the Good Feet Store comes in. Their team of trained art support specialists will find a personalized solution for you to help relieve foot, back, knee, and even hip pain. Support your heels today and head to the Good Feet Store in Chapel Hill, Raleigh, Greensboro, and a new location in Wilmington. It's game day, a day where great food, friends, and family always come together. And bringing people together is what Harris Teeter is all about. We make sure you have the best and most delicious game day foods. Whether you're heading to the arena or making your own tailgate at home, Harris Teeter is where Tar Heel fans shop for groceries. And you can save big on your game day celebration just by joining EVIC. Sign up today and save hundreds of dollars per month. Harris Teeter, let's game day together. Hills got off to a good start from beyond the arc. Harrison Ingram putting the Tar Heels up 5-2. to two. Cadeau, crossover into the paint, finds R.J. Davis driving on the right side, kicks it left corner, open three for Ingram, is good right at the shot clock horn. Tar Heels up three after the three. Later on, Florida State would take a two-point advantage. That would be uh, short-lived. R.J. Davis tying the game at 11. Davis fakes the step back. Corn able to dance with him as Davis going to pull the string, pull up, and hit a mid-range jump shot. What a shot by Davis right of the lane. The two teams would exchange baskets. Armando Baycott ties it at 13. There still has not been a foul called in this game. 13-11 as Baycott rumbling to the rim and hammers it home with two hands on the right baseline. Strong finish by Baycott. All right, so Florida State had the 13-11 lead before Baycott tied it. That would be the last time Florida State had the lead in the first half because the Tar Heels would go ahead with Elliott Cadeau making some magic happen. It's Withers driving right of the lane. He stopped there, kicks it out to Cadeau. Hard drive into the paint and scoops it in with the left hand. What a strong finish by the youngster. That was the strong finish by Cadeau. Now for the finesse finish to put the Tar Heels up five. Primo Spears, though, turns it over. Got caught in the air and lost the ball as Cadeau the other way. Oh, my goodness. He started on the left and finished on the right. I don't know how, but he gets two more. He could just hang up there when he gets going. The Tar Heels in the process of putting together a double-figure lead, currently up 46-30 to at the half. R.J. Davis, it took the uh, ACC Player of the Year a little while to get on track, but he's in double figures with 11. Here's three of them. Heels pushing the pace. R.J. pulls up, transition, triple. Yes, sir. And that's a dagger for R.J. to be able to hit that three. Carolina up 15 after that triple. Carolina would enjoy its biggest lead of 19 after this Armando Baycott finish. Baycott, the offensive rebound, loses it. Ryan can't finish. Ingram out of there with it. Still 14 on the shot clock. Ingram shoots. He can't score. Baycott has it again. Put wow. it in, big fella. The possession lasted as long as Congress has been in session. <laughs> That's Carolina's final field goal of the half. Florida State with a late bucket to make it a 16-point game. Carolina 46, Florida State 30. That's our score here at the half. We'll come back and run through the stats. Carolina leading Florida State by 16 in the ACC from Learfield. 
Hey, Tar Heel fans, score big savings this basketball season at Zips Car Wash with Tar Heel $10 Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, head to a nearby Zips Car Wash and use code 2023 for a car wash with ceramic shine and protection for just 10 bucks. Best of all, vacuums, towels, and spray cleaner are always included. Zips Car Wash has 33 convenient locations across North Carolina. Visit ZipsCarWash.com to find a location near you. Zips Car Wash, proud partner of Carolina Athletics. Hunt Brothers Pizza, the official pizza of Carolina Athletics, joins Tar Heels fans across the nation cheering Go Heels. Whether you're at home watching the game or out on the road, download our Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find a location near you. The Hunt family has been proudly serving our delicious original crust pizza to North Carolina families for over 20 years. With all toppings, no extra charge, and 10 to choose from, there's sure to be a topping combination for everyone to enjoy a Hunt Brothers Pizza. This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. They're not just the Tar Heels, they're your Tar Heels. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today to show your Carolina pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Tar Heels. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official bank of Carolina Athletics. Copyright 2023. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. At Reed's Jewelers, we know that the rules of engagement were made to be broken. So don't settle for the first ring you see in the case. When you put a ring on it, make the moment your own with something that's just as unique as your love. Whether you're going big, keeping it subtle, or finding a happy medium, we're here to help you say I do with a -a one-of-a-kind design. Because doing things your way is what makes them mean everything. Reed's Jewelers, an official partner of Tar Heel Sports. Visit your local Reed's Jewelers in-store or online at reeds.com to chat with an expert. The Wells Fargo halftime show continues with Carolina leading Florida State 46 to 30 in Washington D.C. The Tar Heels shoot 16 of 31 from the floor. That's better than 51 and a half percent. Three of seven from beyond the arc and 11 of 12 at the free throw line. Carolina out rebounding Florida State 22 to six. The Knolls have coughed it up eight times. The Tar Heels have turned it over six times. And it's Carolina 46, Florida State 30. Two players in double figures. Armando Baycott leading everybody with 12. R.J. Davis has 11. Harrison Ingram has nine points to go with six rebounds. Baycott has uh, game-high seven boards to lead the way for the Tar Heels. Balance scoring the rest of the way. Cormac Ryan with five. Elliott Cadeau with four. Two apiece for Trimble in Washington. Jalen Withers has one to round out the scoring for the Tar Heels. Watkins, after 34 yesterday, has seven. He and Spears tied for team high honors for uh, Florida State in that category. It all adds up to a 46-30 advantage for Carolina at the break, and that'll do it for the Wells Fargo Halftime Show, brought to you by Wells Fargo, official sponsor of Carolina Athletics. We'll take a final break and then send things back up to our nation's capital for the game's second half as Carolina leads at intermission over Florida State, 46-30 from Learfield. They're not just the Tar Heels, they're your Tar Heels. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today to show your Carolina pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Tar Heels. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official bank of Carolina Athletics. Copyright 2023. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. Duncan is dropping a new kind of energy. Introducing Sparked Energy by Duncan. It's energy for the fun of it. Available in two full-on delicious flavors, Berry Burst and Peach Sunshine. It's what you need when your afternoon needs you to get going. A revitalizing burst of caffeine, vitamins, and minerals gives you the energy to turn the fun up to 11. True story. Drop by or order ahead on the Duncan app today. Fruit flavored contains 0% fruit juice. Caffeine from caffeine and guarana. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Terms apply. This is Carolina Basketball from Learfield. Together, that's how we stay in the game, ready to play. As one great team, UNC Health is keeping you well by bringing renewed focus, approach, and dedicated services close to you. Exceptional care is what you and your family deserve. 
Together, let's put points on the board for life well played. Team up with UNC Health, proud partner of Carolina Athletics. There are two legendary teams in our state, the Tar Heels men's basketball team and ours at Quality Equipment, where you'll find an unmatched lineup of John Deere equipment from tractor packages to riding mowers and zero turns. Get yours with an unbeatable cash prize or with great financing at our lowest ever monthly payment. Backed by our professional parts and service team that always comes through in a clutch. Stop by one of our 36 locations or visit us online at qualityequip.com. That's all for the Wells Fargo Halftime Show, brought to you by Wells Fargo, official sponsor of Carolina Athletics, with the heels leading by 16 at the break, 46-30. Let's get to the trusted choice of the game, brought to you by the trusted choice independent insurance agents of North Carolina who want you to stay safe behind the wheel, put down your phone while driving, and let's have a hands-free in seat. To learn more and find an agent near you, visit trustedchoice.com slash go heels. Tyler, what in your mind will be important for the second half for Carolina? I think the second half, we just got to continue to compete. I mean, we're currently beating them 22 to 10 and uh, points in the paint. We have 17 points off turnovers. Uh, we got 13 points in the fast break, which is attributed a lot of those turnovers. So just continue to compete, you know, battle on the boards, get after loose balls, create turnovers. Just, I think if we do that, we got a really good chance of finishing this thing off the right way. Carolina out rebounding Florida State 22 to 6. In the first half, there were only five shots that Carolina took in the first half that the Tar Heels both missed and that the Heels didn't get the rebound. Only five. So Carolina up 16 at the break. Florida State will, or heading to the second half, Florida State will get the ball first in the second half as the Seminoles won the opening tip and then there was one jump ball in that first half. All right, Florida State with the basketball to start things off in the second half. Heels up 46-30. Worley dribbling out between the circles. Gets a high screen from Corrin to get to the free throw line. Goes to the right elbow, circles out, back out to Watkins. Hard drive left of the lane. His pivot and turnaround is no good. Ingram crashes the glass, out fights a couple Seminoles for the rebound. He tried to pitch it out and hit the backboard, and Florida State ends up with it. I don't know why Ingram didn't dribble. I think he was... Baba Miller was guarding him. I think he got a little push about to fall out of bounds, so he jumped out of bounds trying to throw it up under the basket, threw it right into the backboard, and then it was just a loose ball Florida State ended up with. Yeah, Cadeau tipped it after that. It was just kind of a wild scrum yeah. after all of that. So Florida State, they had to reset the shot clock as Worley has it, working in the half court. Worley has it again. He's going to back in left of the lane against Cadeau. Lost his footing, recovers, and goes up and earns a foul. Well, let's see if this half is called like that, because yeah. if that's a foul in this half, that's very different from what was a foul in the first half. And that's going to send Worley to the line for two shots. Harrison Ingram, by the way, closing in on 700 rebounds for his career. As he has led the ACC in, in ACC games only this year in rebounding. That's pretty impressive for a guy who's only, what, 6'7"? Yeah. So, I mean, very, very good for uh, somebody that high. Carolina doing a great job there as uh, Worley makes the first free throw. Doing a great job keeping him out of the lane, uh, competing. You know, Worley was able to beat Cadeau, but other than that, they had no opportunity to really get downhill or even get to the paint. Worley gets the roll on the second. So 71% shooter. He made 16 of his last 19 in the regular season and is now 4 of 4 here in the ACC tournament at the line. Florida State picking up with that pressure on the inbound, but then easing up once Carolina gets it into the or onto the playing floor. Cadeau comes front side. Carolina going right to left as we see it courtside here in the second half. And the second half for the Heels starts with a dunk. Baycott with the cut, the catch, and the finish. Great draw up from Coach. Uh, Cadeau gets off the ball quickly to Ingram on the wing. Baycott rolled hard, knowing they're going to help high and able to dunk it. 48-32. Tar Heels back up by 16. Ball loose on the floor. Rolls to Worley in the left corner. Out to Darren Green, Jr. Stopped on the drive by R.J. Davis. Has to circle it back around. Watkins trying to back in against Cormac Ryan and an obvious foul on Ryan there as he swiped down and raked across the forearms of 
Watkins. Second foul on Ryan. Already Carolina, which was called for three total fouls in the first half, having called for two fouls on Florida State's first couple of possessions, including Ryan picking up his second. And so it will be Watkins, who is three of three at the strike, to the line for two shots. In fact, Florida State hasn't been there very often, but they're still perfect at the line as a team. Now six of six. Carolina is 11 of 12 at the free throw line without an attempt yet here in the second half. And Florida State, you got to look for Watkins to be more aggressive. They, have, they didn't were able to score a lot. He's one of the guys on their team that can create a lot of opportunities by himself. Watkins makes them both, so he's up to nine points to lead the Florida State effort. Primo Spears has seven. For Carolina, it's Baycott with 14. R.J. Davis has 11. And it's Davis who gets the inbound from Cadeau. 90 seconds going by in the second half. Carolina 48, Florida State 34. Davis still dribbling well out on the left sideline. Looks like he wanted to go to Ingram, middle of the floor. Could never get an opening to do so. Now he gets it to him on the top right. Ingram kicks it right corner to Ryan. Pump fake on the three. Shot clock's down to six. Ryan trying to drive against Watkins. Into traffic, forces it up. No good, but he does earn the foul on Watkins. His second. So already we have seen three fouls called, and I... At least two of them. Certainly the Ryan play when he was called for a foul, and that one on Watkins I think were pretty clear fouls. The one on Cadeau maybe a little bit questionable, but Ryan's going to the line for two shots. Ryan there being really smart, realizing what happened on the other end. He got called for a foul, so he went right back at uh, Watkins and able to draw, draw the same foul that he just got called for. 18.09 to go as Ryan hits the first, coming off that game where he was 9 of 10. At the strike. And I find referees, a lot of times if they call a foul and you do the same thing on the other end, they're going to call it again because they, they just know that it's the only way to keep it equal. Ah, Ryan comes up short on the second. 49-34, Florida State with the defensive rebound. Warley dribbling on the perimeter. Hand off to Darren Green Jr. who switches in the three. Cadeau thought they were switching with RJ. Cadeau was back too far. Uh, just left him open on the switch. So Florida State within 12. Remember, Carolina led by 19 late in the first half before Primo Spears hit that three right at the buzzer. As Cadeau goes right corner to Ryan. Pump fake for three. Now he'll take it and knock it home. That's a shot he loves. Be able to shot fake. A guy flies by him. A little one dribble sidestep. He's really good at it. Practices a lot. Able to knock it down. So Ryan answers the Florida State three-pointer. Back to a 15-point Carolina lead. Watkins loses the dribble, but it rolls to Baba Miller. Miller trying to ease in against Ingram, and he's called for the foul. Ingram doing a great job. He just he was had his arms up in the air. At the last minute, he saw it, swiped down, and tried to put his arm back up before he got called for the foul, but they got him for it. So Florida State took three free throws in the first half. This will be the fifth and sixth free throw of the second half already for FSU with 17.20 to go. Carolina 52, Florida State 37. Baba Miller is the player out there for the Knowles, and he rattles in the first. He's just a 54% shooter this year. That was during the regular season. He's now 4 of 6 in the ACC tournament with one more coming. And this is what Florida State does. They, they force you to foul. They get to the free throw line a lot. We saw it last night against Virginia Tech. So we've got to do a better job cleaning it up here. Uh, Make them make those shots. Don't foul them when they take them. Florida State now 9 of 9 at the free throw line as Miller made them both. Carolina the other direction, leading by 13, 52-39. R.J. Davis has it out on the right sideline for Carolina. Goes in the corner right to Cadeau. Drive into the paint, out to Davis. Thought about the mile-long three. Instead comes in for a long two that pops out. Baba Miller with the rebound. Coming comes fast. Florida State downhill the other direction. And Baba Miller, that's an obvious offensive foul as he extended the forearm against Cormac Ryan. And the first contact with Ryan, kind of Ryan went back a little bit, and then Miller just kept pushing that mm -hmm. arm out. And when you do that, you're going to pick up the foul, his third. It's easy to predict when you do it once, and then you do it, come back and do it right away again. Ingram to a cutting Cadeau, the, and now a loose ball foul on Florida State. As Ingram, kind of a lackadaisical pass to Cadeau. Cadeau trying to run down the floor. Hit, hit ahead to Ingram. Cadeau trying to catch up. He just he didn't put enough little enough power behind it. It just kind of floated out there. Cadeau missed the catch. Um, scramble for the ball. Got fouled. Ends up being a foul on Watkins, though, and that's his third. So now he and Baba Miller each have three. 
for FSU. The inbounds goes in the corner right to Ingram, facing up against Worley. Now Ingram starts to back in. He kicks it in the corner left to Cadeau. Feet set three-pointer off the back iron. No, but there's Cormac Ryan swooping in for the putback. And that's one you wish Cadeau would drive, but Ryan doing a great job on the weak side getting to the rebound. Ryan up to 11, including six here in the second half as Watkins can't finish on the drive and rebound to Ingram. Watkins slow to get up as Ingram pitches middle of the floor to Baycott. Extra pass to R.J. Davis, and the pass was just a little too far ahead of Davis who tried to save it, but it goes out of bounds. That prompts the aggressive glasses takeoff by Hubert Davis, which we have learned from Coach Davis. That, that is his frustration move, is to rip yeah. the glasses off and at about 90 miles an hour, right before <laughs> he hits to put them down on the table, he'll slow it down, but they're coming down fast. And that's one you don't want to throw it to Baycott or a big running down the middle of the floor. Heels up 15. Corrin has it in the paint. His hook shot crawls off. Open look. And unfortunate bounce for the Knowles. Baycott with the rebound to Cadeau. Head up as he comes front side. Oh, my gosh. Between the legs to the rim. Left hand count it. Great job just seeing the floor. Really just attack the middle of the floor. The Kind of the seat parted, and he was wide open for a layup. I'll tell you, he is in Ty Lawson land as far as speed with the ball. I don't know if he's as fast as Ty, but he can really burn while he has the basketball. Yeah. Darren Green Jr. around a high screen with 11 on the shot clock. Tough fadeaway, too. It's good. Long, tough, too, by Green. He has five all this half. Yeah, Cadeau may not be quite as powerful, but he's just got he's got the same speed and quickness and athleticism that I have. 56-41, Carolina by 15, as R.J. Davis has it in the middle of the floor. Davis, one-on-one -on -one with Darren Green Jr. Just going to try the step back three. No good. He ends up on the deck. Long rebound run down by Ingram to Ryan. 4-3. That's starting to become Ryan's specialty, those kick-out threes. Uh, he's doing a great job getting his feet set. Uh, Ingram chased it down, hit it right to him for a nice open three. He's hit three threes today. He's made two or more in 10 of the last 13 games. Talking about Cormac Ryan. Great to see. 59-41, heels by 18. Baba Miller comes up way short on a long three. Here's the Cadeau Express heading the other way. Leaves it for Davis, trailing triple. Yes, holy smokes. Great job by Cadeau. Really pushed the pace. Looked behind him, saw RJ just kind of dribbled it and dropped it right there. RJ able to step right into it. 62-41. This is a called timeout which will be a full as Florida State calls the break in the action. Leonard Hamilton just couldn't wait for the dead ball as Carolina has now stretched this out to a 21-point lead. And I'm going to tell you something. Cadeau's been good all year. He is taking another step today. He's been awesome. spectacular for Carolina. Tarios playing pretty darn spectacular. Up 21, 62-41, 14-28 to play. Second half in D.C. from Learfield. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball. But legendary teams let their performance do the talking. Like the Ford Bronco SUV. Rugged and powerful, so you can conquer just about any terrain. Connectivity that allows you to stay in touch. Designed to make your adventures worth talking about for years to come. Ford Bronco and Bronco Sport. That's what legends are made of. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. Some model streams and features may not be available or may be subject to change. This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. At Reed's Jewelers, we know that the rules of engagement were made to be broken. So don't settle for the first ring you see in the case. When you put a ring on it, make the moment your own with something that's just as unique as your love. Whether you're going big, keeping it subtle, or finding a happy medium, we're here to help you say I do with a one-of-a-kind design. Because doing things your way is what makes them mean everything. Reed's Jewelers, an official partner of Tar Heel Sports. Visit your local Reed's Jewelers in-store or online at reeds.com to chat with an expert. Liberty Senior Living Communities offer vibrant lifestyles in some of North Carolina's most sought-after locations. The amenities of fine resorts and the incomparable comforts of home. All Liberty Senior Living Communities are designed for active seniors and feature whole-person wellness, distinctive dining, life enrichment, and top-class amenities and services. Visit your local Liberty Senior Living Community, the Templeton of Cary, today and come home to the retirement you deserve. Exceptional senior living here, there, and everywhere you want to be.
Well, this has been impressive. 14-28 to play second half, and Carolina is running away against a good Florida State team, 62-41. Brought to you in part by Modelo, an official beer of the Tar Heels, and also by Kohl's. It's a new season at Kohl's with everyday styles at great prices. You can get more of what you want for less. Find go-tos for going everywhere and perfect picks for your home. Shop Kohl's and Kohl's.com today. You know, check out that Lenovo stats. Zia has, I mean, Carolina's shooting 55%. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously very, very good, including six of nine here in the second half. I'll say what we said in the first half. I do think some of that is the quality of shots that Carolina is getting. Mm -hmm. The Tar Heels are getting a lot of shots around the rim. They have taken some more threes this half, but they're six. They've already taken five threes this half after seven in the first half. But it was an open three from wide Cormac open. Ryan. Twice he's hit. I mean, just wide open threes. That transition three, wide open by R.J. Davis. So they have taken a few more threes, but they've been open or good shots around yeah. the rim. The, the quality of offense is creating that high shooting number. I agree, and I think our pace is doing a, a lot of Yeah, that good too, point. Because Cadeau's pushing it. R.J.'s pushing it. Ingram's pushing it. And I think we've done a great job. And this is, a, I mean, look, they're a long athletic team. You don't want to play against them in a half-court defense where they can switch everything and be set. And being able to push that pace has been great. It open up a lot of opportunities for us. Tariels makes several subs. The five on the floor will be Davis, Trimble, Ryan, Withers, and Washington. So Trimble, Withers, and Washington all in. Cadeau, Ingram, and Baycott will get a breather. Primo Spears is back out for Florida State, as is Taylor Bowl Bowen, who picked up two early fouls for the Knowles in the first half. Jameer Watkins has it at the top of the circle. Kicks it to Darren Green Jr. His tough two, no good. Jalen Washington with those long arms gets the rebound, but then he turns it over as he tried to get it ahead to R.J. Davis. Just didn't see Primo Spears coming, and Spears steals it and lays it home. A tough one for a young guy. Really just didn't see him. Uh, Got to be able to get that outlet pass, though. So 62-43. Carolina with the ball. Trimble looking inside from the left wing. Washington didn't have position, so he'll ease it out to R.J. Davis. Davis, crossover, gets by his defender. little push shot over a couple of towers from Florida State. Goes home. Great shot. Just stopping just short of the shot blocker, able to kind of push it over him. 64-43, back to a 21-point lead for the Heels. Watkins on the perimeter. Tariel's doing a bunch of switching defensively, so Withers guarding him at the moment. Those two pretty athletic dudes going at it. Now R.J. Davis switches on to, ooh, Withers took a huge ooh. shot in the paint. He's going to get called for a foul as he was trying to stay. He was kind of off the ball on defense against Watkins because Carolina had just switched, and so Watkins was cutting across the lane. They collided, and Withers called for the foul. Kind of a tough luck foul for Withers, his tough second, one. fourth on Carolina. It, this will be now the under-16 timeout because that first full timeout was due to Florida State taking a timeout. So this one comes at the 13-21 mark. Heels up 64-43 from Learfield. It's game day, a day where great food, friends, and family always come together. And bringing people together is what Harris Teeter is all about. We make sure you have the best and most delicious game day foods. Whether you're heading to the arena or making your own tailgate at home, Harris Teeter is where Tar Heel fans shop for groceries. And you can save big on your game day celebration just by joining EVIC. Sign up today and save hundreds of dollars per month. Harris Teeter, let's game day together. And we're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever? That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any sports fan. So make sure you... Wait, Jim, I didn't mean try it right now. We're still on the air. Mmm, best Coke ever? Take a taste, Jen. Really? No, not right now, Jen. We got a game to call. What does Carolina basketball have in common with the Honda Accord? More trophies than Duke. The award-winning 2023 Honda Accord, named to Car and Driver's 10 Best List a record 37 times. Part of Honda's impressive full lineup. Accord, Civic, CRV, HRV, Pilot, Passport, Odyssey, and Ridgeline. With available Honda Sensing, Apple CarPlay, and more. Because winning fans deserve a winning car. Find one now at your Honda dealers of the Carolinas. 
coverage of the ACC tournament is presented by Honda Dealers of the Carolinas. If you're a Tar Heel fan, don't just cheer for the best, drive the best. Drive a Honda. Better hurry, they're going fast. See your Honda Dealer of the Carolinas today. Tar Heels are running, they're rebounding, they're shooting, they're defending. It has been good. Carolina with the big lead, 43 for Florida State. Carolina has 64. So 64 43. Tar Heels up by 21. And he'll sharing the ball too. And Harris Teeter is assisting you with groceries this basketball season. Each week, one winner will receive free groceries for every assist. Visit harristeeter.com. Look for the Big Four grocery assist page to enter today. And good news basketball camps are back. Young men who will be in sixth or seventh grade during the 24 25 school year can apply for a scholarship through their local electric cooperative to attend the UNC basketball school this June. Apply online at nclectriccooperatives.com slash sports camps. North Carolina's electric cooperatives building a brighter future for people and communities across the Tar Heel State. Z has about eight kids running around his house. Doesn't have anybody in the sixth <laughs> or seventh grade yet, so they're not not yet not quite ready for that basketball. Game. <laughs> I have a feeling they'll, they'll get it. They'll be allowed. Oh, they'll it, be there for that. They'll be allowed admission when they get of age. So looking forward to that. <laughs> right now, though, watching Carolina play well against Florida State as a foul called inbound went to Taylor Bowl Bowen out near the middle of the floor. Then he drove against Withers. Withers actually challenged the shot pretty well, but Washington came over to try and help and picked up the foul. So the foul on Jalen Washington, his first, fifth, more free throws for Florida State. That's been, this has been the best offense for FSU in the second half. They're six of six at the free throw line. Now it's Taylor Bowl Bowen there, and he knocks it in. Florida State still had missed at the line. 10 of 10 as a team. Carolina shot well as well. 10 of, or 12 of 14 at the free throw strike. It's like I said earlier, I think they're they're not scoring in the paint right now, so we just got to make sure that we don't foul them every time that they get in there. First miss of the day for Florida State at the line as Bowen, Bull Bowen, came up short. Rebound to Withers. So Carolina has Davis Trimble, Ryan Withers, and Washington. They're denying, they being Florida State, denying Davis the basketball, so Trimble continues to dribble out on the perimeter. Shot clock's all the way down to 10. Is now Trimble going to go back door to Withers, up and under for two. Great cut by Withers out of the corner. Trimble coming down the middle of the lane. Withers just took off, able to drop it to him for the layup. I know we said this in the first half, but he does that so well, just finding the right time to cut, talking about Withers for some easy baskets. Great job. Primo Spears in the front court for Florida State, one-on-one with R.J. Davis. Drives, pulls up, and hits the shot. Tough shot by Spears. Spears has played well against Carolina. He didn't play in the first game, had 10 points in the second match. Actually, had 15, excuse me, in the matchup in Tallahassee. And he's up to 11 here today as Washington loses his dribble out on the perimeter but dives to the floor to get it out to R.J. Davis, keep the possession. Heels up 66-46. Bull Bowen switched on to R.J. Davis. Davis, crossovers, pump fake, kicks it to Ryan. Down low to Washington at good position, stripped away, goes back up and has it blocked. And then another foul on Jalen Withers, who just feels like he's been in the wrong place at the wrong time a couple of times. He now has three fouls. That's six fouls on Carolina this half. Nine fouls for the game. Florida State's nine in the first half, 12 for the game. So we'll, they're getting there. 12 minutes to go in the second half. Carolina 66, Florida State 46, right at 12 minutes to go. Florida State will be inbounding when we return. Carolina up 20 from Learfield. Looking for the perfect match? Oh, yeah. Look at you. Find a vehicle you'll love at the Toyota Ready, Set, Go event. Toyota, let's go places. Lease a new 2024 Toyota RAV4 LE for $329 a month for 36 months. Offer valid through April 1st, 2024. Well-qualified lessees with approved credit through Southeast Toyota Finance. 3628 to its signing. No security deposit with select equipment. 350 disposition fee excludes tax tag, registration, title, and dealer fees. See dealer for details. This is Carolina Basketball from Learfield. 
Hey, Tar Heel fans, this is Hubert Davis, head men's basketball coach at the University of North Carolina. Carolina fans are the best in the nation, and I'm so thankful for your support. Just like our team relies on solid fundamentals, you need the right foundation for your feet. And that's where the Good Feet Store comes in. Their team of trained arch support specialists will find a personalized solution for you to help relieve foot, back, knee, and even hip pain. Support your heels today and head to the Good Feet Store in Chapel Hill, Raleigh, Greensboro, and a new location in Wilmington. There are two legendary teams in our state, the Tar Heels men's basketball team and ours at Quality Equipment, where you'll find an unmatched lineup of John Deere equipment from tractor packages to riding mowers and zero turns. Get yours with an unbeatable cash prize or with great financing at our lowest ever monthly payment. Backed by our professional parts and service team that always comes through in a clutch. Stop by one of our 36 locations or visit us online at qualityequip.com. Tar Heels trying to advance to the semifinal round of the ACC tournament. Tar Heels in good position, but still 12 minutes to play, leading Florida State 66-46 here in Washington, D.C. And our coverage of Carolina brought to you in part by Fairfield by Marriott, part of the Marriott Bonvoy portfolio of hotels, and a proud partner of Carolina Athletics Again, that North Carolina Farm Bureau scoreboard reads Heels 66, Knowles 46, Farm Bureau Insurance. Helping you is what they do best. So, Tar Heels in the ACC tournament. Carolina 106 and 51 overall. That's the second most wins in this event. Duke has the most total. Duke also has the most championships. Carolina is second with 18. Tar Heels have not won a title since 2016, though. Carolina has not even been in the championship game since 2018 in this event. Tar Heels all-time in Washington, D.C., 4-1. and one. They went 1-1 one and one in 2005, 3-0 and oh to win the title in 16. If you include Landover, Maryland, so kind of the DMV area, Carolina is 10-3 all-time in this area in ACC tournament action with a championship in 1981. Tar Heels lost in the championship in Landover in 76 and also in 1987. Right now it is Florida State basketball with the Tar Heels leading 66-46. Cadeau back in guarding Watkins on the perimeter. Watkins crosses over, gets left to the lane, just ducks his head into Cadeau and it's going to be an offensive foul on to Watkins because Cadeau had done a good job staying in front of him. Watkins had pivoted, moved, just lowered his head and shoulder to knock Cadeau out of the way, and that's four fouls on Watkins. And Cadeau tried to get out of the way, just I think he really <laughs> couldn't, and so they had to call the charge. Long inbounds to Trimble, soars to the rim, and he gets fouled hard. Seth is okay as Baycott and Ingram go to help him up. Well, it's It'd be oh. nice to be that athletic. Yeah, I, mean, I was about to say, Man. I mean – that's just normal people can't do what Seth Trimble just did, taking off middle of the lane and just hanging up there. He and Withers, the two most athletic players on the Tar Heel team, as Corrin was the fouler for Florida State, his third. So that'll earn two free throws for Seth, and he knocks in the first. Yes. And I think I told a story a couple games ago, but Adam Lucas and I, Adam's helping us out with stat work, talked to Seth a couple weeks ago, and he just talked about the – the confidence that he feels like he's playing with this year, and even talked about kind of when he's in midair like that. These are decisions that normal humans don't make, but that <laughs> he's just trying to be more confident when he's in the air to finish at the rim. And you and saw it there. We, yeah. He went up strong, realized that he was going to get blocked if he didn't, and he kind of brought it back down and tried to finish under his arm and got slapped. Yeah, and he makes both free throws. So it's 68-46. Cadeau, Trimble, Ryan, Ingram and Baycott, the five on the floor for Carolina. As Primo Spears has it out near the timeline for FSU. He's going to attack against Ryan. Pull up at the free throw line. Doesn't get the pop. And rebound to Trimble. Trimble like a jet down the center of the floor. Euro step. Fin oh, he oh. didn't finish through contact, but there's Baycott for the rebound. Is he going to call a charge? He's going to call oh, a foul. Oh, call foul on Armando for the rebound. Tommy Morrissey blows the whistle out near the timeline. That's the first foul on Baycott. Seventh on, yeah, that'll be a one and one. AJ Desai had already given the ball to Florida State to inbound, but that is the seventh foul on Carolina, so it is a one and one 
I think the question to start was whether it was on Trimble or Baycott, but it was on Baycott because if it's on Trimble, an offensive foul, they wouldn't shoot. Uh, but because I think it's on Baycott fighting for the rebound, it will be a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I do think that's the discussion, and they've got it all figured out. So it's going to be Cam Corrin who goes to the free throw line for a one-and-one -one for Florida State. I, these rebounding totals are wild. FSU now has 10 rebounds. Carolina has 31. 31 to 10. Now, Carolina came in as the best rebounding team in the league. Florida State is not a very good rebounding team. 14th in the league in rebounding margin through the regular season. And yet, I mean, see, 31 to 10 is... I mean, Ingram's got nine. Baycott's got eight. So they basically have the same amount as Florida State. So great job by Carolina. I mean, getting their own rebounds. And Trimble gets another rebound on the missed free throw by Corinth. Cadeau down the floor to the cup. Give him two more. He just went right by Primo Spears. That's awesome. Attacking from the slot. Came down the right side of the floor. Uh, really kind of low dribble between two guys and able to get to an athletic left-handed layup. I'll tell you what, this has been at every position. Carolina has been better than Florida State so far today as Baba Miller can't finish. Trimble tips the rebound out to Cadeau. Here we go again. Two on two. Cadeau left it behind his back to Ryan. Ryan, as Carolina gets... Ryan was able to recover and passed it down low. It was knocked out of bounds by Florida State. Carolina get a little loose, a little loose. but they are up 70-46 to 46 with 10.38 to go in the second half. Cadeau did that same pass to R.J. Davis for that three a couple minutes ago. Ryan just Ryan was trying to space to the other side of the floor, didn't quite see it coming. Yeah, he didn't follow behind him the way R.J. does, but Cadeau and R.J. have done that many times. I'm not sure I've seen him do it with Ryan before, but they tried. Cadeau is so fun to watch in the open floor, Gracious. I mean, if he gets a rebound, it, he's gone. <laughs> he whips the inbounds to Ingram. Right corner three, a little short. Baycott battles for the board, had his hands on it a couple times, but knocked it out of bounds. And then he adds in stern words for Lee Cassell, the official, <laughs> as Paxson Wojcik going with the long sleeve white undershirt underneath the white home jersey is going to go replace Cormac Ryan. Looks like. Pax actually has maybe a short sleeve shirt under the long. He's going trying to stay warm. It, yeah, triple they got, shirt. They do got the ice rink under it, so it's a little cooler, but I don't know if it's that cool. Triple top there for Logic. Spears. Quick two is good. Left of the lane. He just danced his way through traffic. He's a good player. He can make those mid-range shots consistently. Oh. Trimble. Oh. Oh my goodness, my right down the center of the lane, hangs in the air, and tomahawks it down. Tomahawk Trimble for two. Just an athletic move across the middle of the lane there. Unbelievable. <laughs> Out of nowhere as Chandler wow. Jackson can't finish. Baycott swats away the rebound. Here comes Carolina again. 72-48. Cadeau wants a screen. He'll get it from Baycott. Picks up his dribble. He'll reset it out to England. Baycott has a mismatch in the post, but Cadeau's going to take a three. No good. And a rebounding foul called on the Seminoles. I, and if I could explain to you as Chandler, and I know that's my job, right? If I could explain to you how quickly Trimble just kind of out of nowhere. It seemed like Carolina was just bringing the ball up the court, and then all of a sudden Trimble explodes and takes off in the middle of the lane, hangs in the air. Throws it down. Foul on Florida State's Chandler Jackson. It's his first and sixth as Paxson Wojcik has it for Carolina. Wojcik has to send the pass out to Trimble, and he just jumps over top of Spears <laughs> to keep it. Shot clock down to eight. Trimble pulls up at the free throw line. Looked like he got hit on the shot, and it came up a little short. Not a great shot, but doing a great job pushing transition. Deserve that one. Florida State going to get an open transition three. No good. And it's going to be another rebounding foul on Florida State. This one's on Corin for shoving Trimble out of the way. That's the fourth on Corin and seventh on the Knoll. So it's a one and one for Trimble. As now Watkins and Corin each have four. Miller with three. Florida State's up to seven as a team. And again, it will be Trimble to the line. You know, R.J. Davis on the bench. Cormac Ryan on the bench. I wonder if I mean, their action may be done. I mean, there's still 9-19 to go, but Carolina's up by 24 points. You, of course, have a game tomorrow if you win this game. Hopefully have a game on Saturday as well. It'd be good to get them a little bit of a break here, get them some breather. They play large minutes usually, so uh, let some of these other guys get some minutes here. Trimble's free throw. Good. So sets up to 
I didn't even write down that time. I was so excited on that dunk, I didn't even mark that one. He's up to five points this half, seven for the game, as now Washington will get Baycott. And he might be done for the night, too. Yeah, oh. so now it's Cadeau, Trimble, Wojcik, Ingram, and Washington. Well, here comes oh. R.J. Davis. <laughs> we don't trust the lineup without Baycott or R.J. Yeah. And, so not so. quite time for everybody to sit down, as Trimble's going to come out to a big round of applause. He's quietly had a really, really good game for Carolina, one of many. Davis was 16. Ryan of uh, Florida State's taking a timeout. Ryan has 14. Baycott has 14 and 10. So a double-double for Baycott, his 15th of the year, 83rd of his career, which puts him, by the way, one behind Ralph Sampson for second place all-time in ACC history. Tim Duncan has the most with 87. So it is uh, those three guys all in double figures, but then you got Ingram, nine points, nine boards. Cadeau, eight points, five assists, and a couple of rebounds. Trimble with eight points, five boards, and an absolute stunningly gorgeous dunk in transition. Carolina has just outclassed Florida State this afternoon, leading 74-49. Primo Spears has 14 for the Knowles. But that is the only Seminole in double figures. It's Spears actually 74-48. Excuse me. The, we are, our scores on our stats are incorrect. It's 74-48. Z, Caroline's up by 26. And Spears has done well for him. You know, he's shooting those mid-range jump shots, a shot we're okay with, especially with this lead. Uh, really, other than that, Florida State struggled to find offense. Again, it's Cadeau, Davis, Wojcik, Ingram, and Washington. Carolina is starting to sub a little bit here as Washington blocks the shot attempt of Warlick. Cadeau tried the pitch ahead through traffic. It's tipped away, and diving to the floor is Ganey for Florida State. Now Ingram jumps on top of him. I think that's going to be a foul on Ingram as he did get on top of Ganey jumping for the loose ball. But the hustle. Up yeah. 25, 26, sorry. Up 26, and Ingram still on the floor fighting for a loose ball. So that's third on Harrison, eighth on Carolina. So it will be a one and one for Jalen Ganey, who is a 46% free throw shooter. He's from Greensboro originally. St started his career at Brown. He actually played against Carolina in that game where Paxson Wojcik played so well for Brown. Ganey was on the team as well. He had four points and a couple of blocks. He grew up a state fan in Greensboro, so made an early mistake. But <laughs> <laughs> free throw is good. I'll tell you what, Florida State can shoot some free throws. They yeah, today they certainly can. Great. They came into this game 13th in the 15-team ACC, but still over 70% as a team. Like The ACC has some really good yeah. free throw shooting teams in total as Ganey goes one of two, but the rebound poked out to the Seminoles, so they get the offensive board. Chandler Jackson hits the runner on the other side, drove hard against Washington, and they kind of stopped and popped. And then the Tar Heels turn it over on the inbound as Ingram's pass was sloppy. So Florida State has it back. Primo Spears on the drive, can't finish, but Ganey tips it in. So that ends up being a five-point session for Florida State. And they're back within 21 at 74-53. Coach Davis glances up at the scoreboard trying to make sure we're still up by 21 because that was a little sloppy. Yeah, uh, Carolina just got a lock in. Fouled, then gave up an offensive rebound, then turned it over on the inbound. 8-19 to go, 74-53. R.J. Davis has it with nine on the shot clock. Offense not moving, just standing watching R.J. He's... Got Ganey, the big man, guarding him. He'll work it around to an open Wojcik in the right corner for three. Good to see him make one. Great offense. RJ got the double team. Hit Ingram all the way over to uh, Wojcik in the corner. Just his fifth make in 25 attempts this year. He is a better shooter than that, but he has struggled this season as one of the rare times that Worley was able to get by Cadeau and get the bucket. Carolina pitches ahead to Wojcik. <laughs> Wojcik was driving to the rim, saw Ganey there, and said, eh, maybe not. Tariel's the other direction. R.J. Davis, feet set three. That one looked off as soon as he shot it. It was. Washington, though, earns the offensive rebound. He's in a triple team, ducks his head out of it, and gets it back to Davis, who will slow it down. Heels up 77-55. Largest lead has been 26 for Carolina. 
Davis against Baba Miller into heavy traffic. Missed it, got it right back, and scores. Got lucky there. Got it blocked. I don't even know if he realized the ball was in his hands, and then he ended up floating it up. That bucket for R.J. Davis since impasse Antoine Jameson for ninth all-time on the scoring list at Carolina. So you've got Baycott, who's third now all-time, and Davis, who is ninth. That's impressive to be able to be that high. Primo Spears, mid-range jumper no good. Long rebound, tipped out Cadeau. Start the break for Carolina. Three on two to a trailing R.J. Davis, and Davis will slow it up. Underhand it out to Wojcik. Back to Davis in the left corner. Baba Miller much taller guarding him, and Davis will ease out. Again, Carolina with the big lead. Although Davis is looking, well, now he's just going to fire it up from the corner. No good. He was shooting that one for about five seconds. He was just trying to figure out how to get it over Baba Miller. Comes Chandler Jackson the other way, runs over Wojcik, no whistle. Washington slaps the shot, but into the hands of Worley. Florida State keeps the possession going. Down low it goes to Ganey, his twisting shot no good. And rebound goes to Jalen Washington, who will cradle it like a baby Bjorn on his chest <laughs> to get Florida State out of the way. Here come the heels. Davis to Ingram, and he could have taken a shot and said he's going to ease it into the left corner. Carolina content to burn some clock here. Up 79-55 as Trimble coming off the bench. Ingram swoops into the paint, finds Wojcik. He'll cut from right to left across the baseline. Tough three is no good. The bench got up as one. I'm telling you, Wojcik hits threes like you wouldn't believe in practice <laughs> consistently. They thought that was one of those tough threes that might go. As it didn't, Worley, of ill-advised shot on the other side. No good. Here comes Carolina the other way. Ingram to Wojcik is fouled in transition. Wojcik is great in practice. Scout team, good to see him having a little success here. See if Carolina, as Trimble is coming in, I think he's going to get R.J. Davis. As now, with 5.36 to go, you have to figure those subs are going to start coming pretty freely with the heels up 79-55. That foul was on Chandler Jackson, his second. And it will earn two free throws for Wojcik when we come back. Carolina is close to the semifinal round, leading 79-55, 5.36 to play from their field. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Playing basketball at the highest level requires excellent physical conditioning. And keeping your home in shape requires regular physical attention, too. As a proud partner of Carolina Athletics, Allen Tate Realtors recommends a home physical. We'll help determine your home's value, share the latest market data and trends, and recommend updates and improvements to maximize your most important investment. Whether you plan to sell or stay, take a tip from Allen Tate and defend your home court with a home physical today. Visit homephysical.com to get started. Texting while driving takes your eyes off the road for an average of five seconds. That's like driving the length of a basketball court three times with your eyes closed. Research shows you are three times more likely to get into an accident when distracted by a cell phone. Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents urge you and your families to put down your phone. Every day in the U.S., more than nine people are killed and 1,000 injured in crashes involving a distracted driver. Let's have a hands-free NC. Brought to you by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents of North Carolina. Learn more at trustedchoice.com slash goheels. Coverage of the ACC Tournament is presented by Honda Dealers of the Carolinas. If you're a Tar Heel fan, don't just cheer for the best, drive the best. Drive a Honda. Better hurry, they're going fast. See your Honda Dealer of the Carolinas today. Carolina has led by as many as 26 points, currently up by 24, 79, 55, and Tar Heels have just been really really good every aspect they've defended well they've rebounded at an elite level they have shot well they've got good shots after some turnover issue i mean carolina has 11 turnovers and that's higher than they want but a bunch of they had five or six in the first couple minutes um so they've really done a better job as that has as this game has moved along and the leads just continued to grow as the tar Heels have controlled this game they went on a 12 nothing run near the end of the first half, which had them up 19. Florida State hit a three right at the buzzer of the first half to have a Carolina plus 16 at halftime. And 
Knowles haven't really challenged here in the second half. Our broadcast brought to you in part by Allen Tate Realtors. Whether you're buying, selling, relocating, or seeking financing or insurance, Allen Tate can help. Allen Tate Realtors, the number one realtor in the Carolinas with more than 70 local offices and a proud partner of Carolina Athletics. Davis with 18, Ryan 14, Baycott 14 and 10, a double-double. Ingram, 9 points, 10 rebounds, 8 for Trimble, 8 for Cadeau. Cadeau has 5 assists and 3 steals as well. So a lot of different Tar Heels getting in the action, and that includes Paxson Wojcik, who will be at the free throw line for two shots. Cadeau's made, got a block shot, too. Yeah, Cadeau is a block. Z couldn't believe that. As Wojcik's free throw is short with the left hand. He's been a good free throw shooter in limited attempts this year. 12 of 15 coming into this one, although that one does carry him off the front iron. So second one on the way, though, for Paxson Wojcik. And that one's off the back iron, so missed them both. Five. But Jalen Washington fighting for the rebound. It's going to be a tie-up and the arrow to Carolina. So even Great though job. Wojcik missed them both, good effort there by Washington, and Carolina will keep possession. And up 24, obviously, this lineup isn't a big deal, but it would be really good to get them some continuity, be able to see them play well, be able to trust them a little bit going into the NCAA tournament. Um, but, you know, this, this group has struggled a little bit together. Inbounds goes to Trimble on the right baseline, and he pushes it up for two. So has, Trimble's into double figure Z for the sixth time this year. He hasn't struggled tonight. He's played no, well. He has played very well. He's up to 10. Tariels have it's Cadeau, the only starter. Cadeau, Trimble, Wojcik, Wash, or Withers, and Washington. The five on the floor. 5-10 to play. Guarded three is missed by Spears. Good rebound by Jalen Washington after Spears missed the right corner triple. Cadeau comes front side on a jog. Carolina in control, looking to move to the semifinal round. Cadeau jumps through traffic and misses the little push shot left of the lane. He's stuck on eight points, trying to become the fifth Tar Heel in double figures. Darren Green, Jr., trailing three. Back iron, no. Way up in the air for the rebound, though, is Watkins. Pump fake gets Withers airborne, and Withers swipes down on him for the foul after that. Foul on Withers. That's four. And that means free throws coming for Watkins for Florida State. Getting a little lackadaisical here, you know. Withers there just turned, didn't block out, uh, bounced over his head. But, you know, some of these guys got to be able to get in good form. You know, Withers not being one of them, but... You know, be good to get Jalen Washington some more minutes. Good to see Paxton, Paxton Wojcik be able to try to find his way. Um, but really, you know, this offense needs to get a little more, get a little better. We're just kind of one-on-one -on -one this last possession. 4.41 to go. So the free throw is good by Watkins. So that makes it 81-56. And stays that way. So the second one's too strong. And Withers with the rebound. You know, Carolina is the number one seed. Has never lost in the quarterfinal round. 21-0 as the number one seed in the quarterfinals and on its way to being 22-0. I think you're safe saying that up 25. Yeah. Tariels will face a stern challenge tomorrow, though, as Cadeau's pass is knocked free. It was a little bit off the mark as he tried to go down low to Washington. Heels turn it over. Transition three, no good. And Washington going to be called for the foul as he pushed the Seminole in the back on the rebound. Second foul on Washington. And 10th on Carolina, so free throws coming for Cam Corn. My point was going to be, Tarrell's going to face a stern challenge tomorrow regardless of whether or not it's Pitt or Wake. That game coming up next. Pitt has been playing very well. Very different team than the one the Tarrell saw in Pittsburgh. Of course, Tarrell's are different too. But um, And Wake... I mean, it's been a wild season for Wake Forest as the free throw is good by Corin. But whichever team advances past the game today, a win over Carolina, if it's Wake, it absolutely, one would think, would seal their NCAA tournament berth. And if it's Pitt, it dramatically strengthens the Panthers' resume. So gives them a chance. Yeah, it'll, Carolina's going to be playing a good team with a lot to play for, regardless of who it is. Cadeau out to an open Withers for three on the right wing. Good shot by Withers. Great drive by Cadeau. Head out to Withers. But really, I think it's a dangerous game, too, because you're coming off a big win today. Sometimes you come in a little too relaxed tomorrow, so we'll want to be locked in. And Florida State can't answer the three. Rebound tipped around. Washington way up there for it. He'll hand off to Trimble. Trimble's pitch ahead is tipped and taken away by Watkins. 
finds Worley cutting down for two, and Florida State's going to take its last timeout with 3.29 to go. And Carolina leading 84-59. This will be the media timeout, the under four timeout. Carolina leading by 25 points. Florida State out of timeouts now. Heels up 84-59 from Learfield. From the mountains to the coast, 2.5 million North Carolinians are members of an electric cooperative. As a co-op member, you're part of exciting efforts to power a brighter future in the Tar Heel State. From innovative energy projects that make the grid more resilient and sustainable, to initiatives that strengthen local communities and services that make managing your energy use easier, electric cooperatives are here for you. Learn more at nclectriccooperatives.com slash brighter. This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. Facing divorce or family law matters? Count on Wake Family Law Group. Led by board-certified family law specialists, we approach your divorce or custody case with integrity and meticulous attention to detail, aiming for positive outcomes for you. Rely on us to advocate for your interests and help you move forward. Serving the triangle and surrounding counties, learn more at www.wakefamilylawgroup.com. Wake Family Law Group, your future, our priority. Hey there, Triangle NBA veteran and UNC basketball star Pete Chilcutt, proud owner of Generator Supercenter of the Triangle, is thrilled to present the real MVP, Generac Generators. Pete Chilcutt here. On the court, I know the importance of a strong defense. Off the court, Generator Supercenter of the Triangle has your back with Generac Generators. With turnkey installation and unbeatable reliability, Generac Automatic Standby Generator ensures your power will stay on, family will be safe, and most of all, you'll have peace of mind. Schedule a consultation today at Generator Supercenter of the Triangle.com. Carolina looks to be going to the semifinal round of the ACC tournament. As the Tar Heels lead it 84-59 with 3.29 to go over Florida State. Jones and Tyler Zeller here with you in D.C. We are joined here, not quite quite a level up off of courtside, second row. Ben Alexander, our chief network engineer. Adam Lucas helping us out with statistical work today. Dave Nathan, John Essick, back in our Tar Heel Sports Network studios. We'll be back, assuming Carolina holds on to this lead. We'll be back with you tomorrow night for the Tar Heels at 7 o'clock. We'll be on the air at 6 for the pregame. Carolina in the semifinals against either Wake or Pitt. And uh, one note about our postgame in the ACC tournament format. We could get a one-on-one with Coach Davis, but we have – we would have to wait until after his press conference. So we're just going to go ahead and carry his press conference instead. So we'll have that press conference coming up in the post game in a bit. And, uh, Adam, I may go back, try to get a player back there with the Tar Heels uh, cruising here in the quarterfinal round. Zayden High has checked in. He has replaced Elliot Cadeau. So the Tar Heels will have Trimble, Wojcik, Withers, the freshman high and Washington with 329 to play. Florida State still has plenty of its regulars out on the court. Spears and Worley as now Okonkwo comes to the scorer's table. Watkins still out there for FSU as is Corin. There is one sub. Josh Nickelberry is a veteran player. Started his career at Louisville, then went to LaSalle. And now at Florida State, he's out on the floor for FSU. Trimble spinning into the lane, misses the turnaround. Rebound tipped out. Withers diving into the stands. Can't quite save it, but just another example of the effort Carolina's had today. Withers jumping over the front row with a 25-point lead and 3.03 to play. I love the effort. I think, you know, three minutes might be time to, you know, let's be careful and not get hurt too. <laughs> so That looked pretty dangerous there. Dead ball will get Washington out and Okonkwo in. Looks like a Tar Heel fan maybe got a drink spilled on her with that sequence, but she's got to be happy. We're up 25, so, you know. Watkins gets by high and lays it in. Good little move there. That's his first bucket of the second half. A little crossover finger roll, tough finish. 
Trimble coast to coast, tries Whoa. the alley-oop, which Okonkwo goes way up and finishes. Okonkwo just standing at the rim. Trimble created it for him, threw it up to him. I thought that was going to be way too high as Florida State turns it over. Come the Tar Heels the other way. Withers will attack the bucket. Oh. He tried to tomahawk it down but got blocked by the rim. Meanwhile, Wojcik gets it to High, who nice goes up piece. and under for two. Great move by High, able to catch a little head fake. Got him up, and then a tough little finish on the weak side. Probably the, the biggest challenge Carolina's had today has been Withers versus the rim on dunks. <laughs> He's missed two of them, and Spears hits a runner for Florida State. After all that action, the score now 88-63. Creighton Lebo has come to the scorer's table for Carolina, so he's going to get into the action as Trimble is milking the clock out near the timeline. Guarded by Worley. Florida State. As Trimble attacks and plays it in on the right. Woja came up, set a little slip screen, just enough to get him to move his feet. Trimble just attacked right behind it. That Trimble's up to 12. That ties his career high. I'm guessing Lebo is coming in for him. Talk about Trimble, as now Rob Landry and Dewey Ferris are going to check in as well as Josh Nickelberry hits a tough long two. 123 to go. Tough shot. I think Carolina wants that Trimble to get front side, which they do, and then Carolina wants to take a timeout just to get the subs in. So Trimble's going to leave with a great performance. Who else is checking out? Looks like Wojcik will check out, and Withers will check out as well. Hubert Davis with quick dap up and hugs for all three of those gentlemen. So the five on the floor as four states bringing in some new players too. Five on the floor for Carolina will be Lebo, Landry, Ferris, High, and Okonkwo. Tom House has checked in for Florida State, a sophomore from Dayton, Ohio. And that may have been it for Florida State. So House, the only new player coming in. High going one-on-one -on -one with Corrin. Strong move into the paint and scores. Great move by Zayden. Again, a little head fake step through move. So High has his career high, just four points in his Deep reserve minutes this year. The freshman from San Antonio, Texas. Primo Spears trying to go against Creighton Lebo. Another tough shot. Spears has 17, including 10 this half. That ties his season high. That was not bad defense by Lebo. It was just a tough long two by Primo Spears. He can make some tough shots. Yep. You know, the other thing I'll say was Aiden High's move. It was against their starting center. Yep. Um, so it wasn't somebody who, you know, was an easy layup. Lebo, still the only Tar Heel scored this year. Tries to go up and under against Tom House. Can't quite bank it in from the left side. Tariels were trying to get Lebo a bucket as Creighton Lebo forces the turnover. I think Hubert Davis, though, is going to pump the brakes, says Carolina leading 92 67. Creighton Lebo will indeed dribble it out. This heavy Tar Heel crowd in the nation's capital on its feet as Carolina. Any questions about rust or energy level? Execution level, the Heels answer that quickly. Jumping out to a 19-point lead late first half, led by 16 at the break, then end up leading in the second half by as many as 27 points and win it by 25. 92-67. Carolina remains undefeated as the number one seed in the ACC tournament in the quarterfinal round. Now 22-0 all-time in the quarters as the top seed. Heels will move on to the semifinals tomorrow against either Wake Forest or Pittsburgh. Carolina improves to 26-6 and six with the victory. Florida State finishes above 500, so postseason basketball a possibility for them as they will finish this portion of the year at 17-16. and 16. We'll have to see if there's any more basketball for them in the future. All right, we're going to take a timeout, come back. More to do from D.C. Again, we're going to carry Coach Davis's press conference. So when he's in there, we'll have that and break this one down as well. 92-67 the final from Learfield. Jeff, I'm standing courtside where this team is about to celebrate a staggering win here in the fourth quarter. I just spoke with the team captain, who told me they owe it all to Kohl's, where fans found the license gear, game day hosting fines, and other essentials they needed to rally this team to victory. He said, quote, great brands, great prices. Discover it all at Kohl's and Kohl's.com. Back to you.
North Carolina Farm Bureau Insurance was just named one of America's best insurance companies by Forbes and the nation's best auto insurer in Crash Network's insurer report card for the third year in a row. Sometimes being the best means being a little different. Our difference is our people. And with agents in every county, you've got local award-winning service right in your backyard. North Carolina Farm Bureau Insurance. Helping you is what we do best. They're not just the Tar Heels, they're your Tar Heels. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today to show your Carolina pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Tar Heels. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official bank of Carolina athletics. Copyright 2023, Wells Fargo Bank N.A., member FDIC. For any surface and every season, Continental Tire is the smart choice in tires. From ultra-high performance tires like the Extreme Contact Sport to passenger touring tires to all-terrain light truck tires like the Terrain Contact AT, Continental has a tire that gives you confidence no matter the road conditions. Whether you're looking for summer, all-season, or winter tires, Continental Tire has something to fit your needs. Visit ContinentalTire.com to find your ideal tire. Continental Tire, a proud partner of Carolina Athletics. And we're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever? That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any sports fan. So make sure you... Wait, Jim, I didn't mean try it right now. We're still on the air. Mmm. <sighs> best Coke ever? Take a taste, Jen. Really? No, not right now, Jen. We got a game to call. Hunt Brothers Pizza, the official pizza of Carolina Athletics, joins Tar Heels fans across the nation cheering Go Heels. Whether you're at home watching the game or out on the road, download our Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find a location near you. The Hunt family has been proudly serving our delicious original crust pizza to North Carolina families for over 20 years. With all toppings, no extra charge, and 10 to choose from, there's sure to be a topping combination for everyone to enjoy a Hunt Brothers Pizza. It is the Coca-Cola Post Game Report, and Carolina heading deeper into the ACC tournament after routing Florida State in the quarters, 92-67. Carolina into the semifinals, where it'll take on either Pittsburgh or Wake Forest. The Panthers and Demon Deacons next out on the floor, somewhere around the bottom of the hour as the uh, Tar Heels into Friday's action. We've got a lot to get to here on the Coca-Cola postgame report. We'll hear from Jones and Z, also Coach Davis, Adam Lucas, hopefully uh, hunting a player in the Carolina locker room, and, of course, scores on the North Carolina Farm Bureau scoreboard. Helping you is what they do best. Again, Carolina 92, Florida State 67. Pitt and Wake next up at 2.30. Then it's Duke and NC State in the first game of session number two at 7. After that, at 9.30, Virginia tries to knock off the upstart BC Eagles, who have already won twice in this event. To the top 25, one game in progress. Under 12 minutes to go in the second half, number 25, Texas Tech, pouring it on number 20, BYU, as the Red Raiders lead 60-36. Uh, another final report as UConn blitzes Xavier, 87 to 60. So that's what's happening on the North Carolina Farm Bureau scoreboard, helping you is what they do best. The next way the game should be starting around 3 o'clock, so we've got some more time to preview those. In the meantime, let's take a quick break and come back. We'll uh, head back to Washington, D.C., where Jones and Z will break down the game that was, and we'll check in with Coach Davis. Carolina beats Florida State 92-67 from Learfield. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talking basketball. But legendary teams let their performance do the talking. Like the Ford Bronco SUV. Rugged and powerful, so you can conquer just about any terrain. Connectivity that allows you to stay in touch. Designed to make your adventures worth talking about for years to come. Ford Bronco and Bronco Sport. That's what legends are made of. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. Some model trims and features may not be available or may be subject to change. 
At Reed's Jewelers, we know that the rules of engagement were made to be broken. So don't settle for the first ring you see in the case. When you put a ring on it, make the moment your own with something that's just as unique as your love. Whether you're going big, keeping it subtle, or finding a happy medium, we're here to help you say I do with a one-of-a-kind design. Because doing things your way is what makes them mean everything. Reed's Jewelers, an official partner of Tar Heel Sports. Visit your local Reed's Jewelers in-store or online at reeds.com to chat with an expert. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. This is Carolina Basketball from Learfield. Hey, Tar Heel fans, this is Hubert Davis, head men's basketball coach at the University of North Carolina. Carolina fans are the best in the nation, and I'm so thankful for your support. Just like our team relies on solid fundamentals, you need the right foundation for your feet. And that's where the Good Feet Store comes in. Their team of trained arch support specialists will find a personalized solution for you to help relieve foot, back, knee, and even hip pain. Support your heels today and head to the Good Feet Store in Chapel Hill, Raleigh, Greensboro, and a new location in Wilmington. They're not just the Tar Heels, they're your Tar Heels. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today to show your Carolina pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Tar Heels. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official bank of Carolina athletics. Copyright 2023. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. Your one stop for all college sports is the Varsity app and the brand new Varsity Network website, thevarsitynetwork.com. Keep up with your favorite teams and the rest of college sports no matter where you are with thevarsitynetwork.com. Live and on demand broadcasts, your favorite college centric podcasts with stories and video around college sports and your favorite teams. Be sure to download the Varsity app and check out the brand new Varsity Network website, thevarsitynetwork.com. The good news this afternoon, Carolina is not going anywhere except into the semifinals, so another stay in D.C. after Hubert Davis's team beats Florida State 92-67. Let's send things back up to D.C. Jones and Z still courtside. Guys? Yeah, thanks, Dave. I was just looking at uh, some of the career numbers. Of course, we've been tracking Armando Baycott and now R.J. Davis as well as they have moved up these uh, records for the Tar Heels. R.J. now, he made today, he made two three-pointers. That gives him 99 on the season. So that's the second most ever in a single season for Carolina. Justin Jackson, 105 in 2017, holds that record. Points-wise, as we told you, R.J. moved past Antoine Jamison today into ninth place all-time. At Carolina, he's at 1,975 points. The great Larry Miller is next and reachable. He's only seven points ahead of R.J. Davis for eighth place all time. Um, for Baycott, he ends up with a double-double today, 14 points and 10 rebounds. The points gives him 2,253. Next up on the list, he is third. Phil Ford at 2,290. That's, I mean, that record stood for... 30 years as the all-time scoring record at Carolina before Tyler Hansbrough broke it. Um, so certainly attainable, but a few more games one would think, in which Carolina hopes to have plenty more games still to play. The the one of real note for Armando today is the double-doubles. He moves up to 83 now in his career. That's just one behind Ralph Sampson. I mean, he is up there with some of the elite, elite, elite big guys in ACC history. Tim Duncan holds the all-time record with 87. Sampson with 84. Baycott now has 83 double doubles on his career so really impressive stuff for both those guys as they continue to move through their uh, terrific Carolina careers and see just impressive stuff from Carolina in total today uh, the heels were maybe a little sloppy the first six to eight minutes at most but then really you saw the pace picked up the defense was good from the start but yeah. they were able to start turning that defense into some more transition opportunities dominated the glass 
Um, and that 12-0 run near the end of the first half, which gave them the 19-point lead. FSU hit a buzzer-beating three to make it 16 at the break. But that 12-point run um, really set it put Carolina in good position, which they never really slipped out of in the second Yeah, half. I think the two biggest things I saw from the start of the game, Coach Davis was saying, push the pace, push the pace, get up the floor. And part of our sloppiness was I felt like we were pushing the pace too much. He obviously knew better than me. And we continued to push, and we ended up blowing them out. I think the second thing is you said they hit the three at the end, which took the 16. They came out. They hit another three, which took it to 13. But we did a really good job in response to that. We were able to push that lead back up, and then our transition game ended up, you know, the speed of Trimble, Cadeau, RJ, uh, great job in transition. Cadeau was unbelievable tonight. And his stat line doesn't really show it. He's only eight points, four rebounds, six assists, uh, two turnovers, and three steals, which and a block. I'll give him credit for the block. So, but, I mean, kind of across the board was able to do a lot of small things that added up to a great game. You know, there was that one play – which kind of, I mean, Florida State was probably wobbling anyway at this point. But when Carolina got the rebound, got it to Cadeau, or maybe they forced the turnover, I can't remember. Cadeau was in open the court, left it behind him for Davis for the wide open three-pointer. That just kind of summed it up. It was Carolina was running, finding the open guy, hitting open shots. Uh, they they were impressive. And that was right after Cormac had hit a three on an offensive rebound also. Yeah. That, those kind of plays just take you from – you know, that 13 to 19 real quick, and all of a sudden, you know, 13 feels reachable, 19 feels like a really, really uphill battle. All right, I tell you what, we're waiting for Coach Davis to get into the press conference. Let's take a break. If we need to get out of this break, we might be able to if we need to. If they get in there, we'll get right to it if they get into the press conference while we're in this commercial. But let's go ahead and do that. Come back. We'll go through the stats of this one. Plus, we'll hear from the Tar Heels in the media room soon. Carolina wins it 92-67 from Learfield. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Tar Heels. Join Valley Sports every week as we dive into the heart of the action with exclusive interviews with coaches and players across UNC Athletics. Relive every incredible highlight and get in-depth breakdowns from each game. Watch Carolina Insider on Valley Sports South every Monday at 3 and stream it on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. This is Jones Angel, voice of the Tar Heels. And as a parent, I know nothing is more important than the safety of our children. More than 22% of teen-involved crashes per year in North Carolina are the result of distracted driving. Help protect our teenage drivers by ensuring they practice safe driving habits and avoid distracted driving. Always encourage your teens to put down the phone while driving and lead by example. Let's have a hands-free NC. Brought to you by Trusted Choice Independent Insurance Agents of North Carolina. Learn more at trustedchoice.com slash heels. Duncan is dropping a new kind of energy. Introducing Sparked Energy by Duncan. It's energy for the fun of it. Available in two full-on delicious flavors, Berry Burst and Peach Sunshine. It's what you need when your afternoon needs you to get going. A revitalizing burst of caffeine, vitamins, and minerals gives you the energy to turn the fun up to 11. True story. Drop by or order ahead on the Duncan app today. Fruit flavored contains 0% fruit juice. Caffeine from caffeine and guarana. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Terms apply. This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. Facing divorce or family law matters? Count on Wake Family Law Group. Led by board-certified family law specialists, we approach your divorce or custody case with integrity and meticulous attention to detail, aiming for positive outcomes for you. Rely on us to advocate for your interests and help you move forward. Serving the triangle and surrounding counties, learn more at www.wakefamilylawgroup.com. Wake Family Law Group, your future, our priority. Together, that's how we stay in the game, ready to play. As one great team, UNC Health is keeping you well by bringing renewed focus, approach, and dedicated services close to you. Exceptional care is what you and your family deserve. Together, let's put points on the board for life well played. Team up with UNC Health, proud partner of Carolina Athletics. 
which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season. You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. This is Carolina Basketball. Our post-game coverage continues with the Carolina Ford Dealers Wrap-Up Show. Ford F-150, what legends are made of. See your Carolina Ford Dealer today. This is the Carolina Ford Dealers Wrap-Up Show. Dave Nathan welcoming you back to business as Carolina routes Florida State in the quarters 92-67. And for 25 years, Top of the Hill Restaurant and Brewery has been a pre- and post-game tradition. Handcrafted beer, great food and atmosphere where Tar Heels come to celebrate. Let's bring Tyler Zeller back into the broadcast. And, Z, just looking at some of the numbers here, Harrison Ingram was somebody that you and Jones I don't think touched on a moment ago, and he had a very Harrison Ingram-like Nine points, ten rebounds, four assists, and 28 minutes. And, again, going up against one of the most physical teams in the ACC, and, and by virtue of that, the country, it was Ingram's play that seemed to be the best on display. Yeah, I don't know how many times tonight Ingram would come down with a rebound with three, four, or five people fighting for it. And, really, from there, he did a great job either pushing it himself or hitting Cadeau or – RJ or somebody in transition and we were able to get out so quickly because of that. So um, really, you know, I wish he would have made that last shot, be able to get that double-double, but nine points, ten rebounds, just doing what he's done all year, being that extra guy, the four assists, adding to it again, and just he's a, he's a guy who just makes a difference. You know, his stat sheet really doesn't show him, and Cadeau, I feel like, never get justice in a stat sheet for everything that they do. Uh, but you go by the plus-minus, he's 28, leading our team. So he was in for the most minutes where we were able to get ahead. Cadeau, eight points, four rebounds, six assists. And, Z, at some point in this season, Elliot Cadeau went from being a freshman finding his sea legs to a confident basketball player. And he, he is in the mold of some other pretty good ones that have come through that have played this position in Chapel Hill. No question. I think he really understands the offense. That, that point guard position is hard to get used to at college level because – at the high school level, you only have maybe one or two other guys on your team that can really go create their own shot and make a basket. I mean, you look at this, he's got to learn where Baycott wants it in the post. He's got to look at uh, Harrison Ingram, who wasn't here last year, so he's got to learn him of does he want on a three-point line, does he want it in the post, where does he need to go. And then he's got to find Cormac Ryan's spots. He's got to find RJ spots. He's got to learn all those things, and then he's got to learn the plays of where to get them and all that. It's really hard transition from high school where you're not used to that. And at the same time, you got to play your game. you got to get to the rim. you got to make plays for yourself as well as for all those other guys. And uh, he's done a, a great job here at the end of the year knowing his spots, finding his layups, his shots and all that. And then, you know, I know he shot four threes today, but at the same time, we were up by a lot. And, you know, he still thinks he's a shooter, which every good player thinks they are. Um, I thought I was a shooter, and I you know, no, I wasn't. But, you know, we all think that. So he did a great job just finding his spots and doing the right things. 92-67, Carolina beats Florida State. And unlike in the first two games against the Knowles, Carolina didn't have the free throw advantage uh, by, by a wide disparity, but still made 16 of 20 from the free throw line, which means another 1,600 meals were donated to a local area food bank through Food Line Feeds. Score to give more program. Z, aside from the charity strike, let's talk about the glass here. 48 rebounds to 22 for Florida State. The Knowles could barely buy a carom in the first half. As, as your eyes always draw you, I'm guessing, to what's happening underneath, how in the world did Carolina hold a rebounding advantage of, what was it, 26 over Florida State? Yeah, and I mean, if you look at halftime, it was 22 rebounds to six. Florida State only had six rebounds in the first half. And Carolina only, I think Jones said it at a half, there was only five rebounds that we didn't get our own shot, like get the rebound on our own shot. I mean, just a, a great job inside battling for the boards, creating extra opportunities. And I think that's how you get a, you know, a, a great separation, 25-point win 
um, is to be able to dominate the paint. And we, I mean, we dominated points off turnovers, uh, points on the paint. We were plus 22. Second chance points, we were plus seven. Fast break points, we were plus 20. I think we just did a great job on all those things and uh, just shows an all-around great win. It all adds up to a 92-67 win for Carolina over Florida State. And, Z, given the fact that the Tar Heels have a double bye, if you get to Saturday, obviously it helps the teams that didn't have to go through Tuesday and Wednesday first. But to, to sit your best players maybe an extra eight to ten minutes today, what does that do for Carolina's legs over the course of this tournament? It does a lot. And I think another thing that does a lot is playing a noon game and then 7 o'clock tomorrow night. You get instead of less than 24 hours, you got almost – you know, 27 to 30 hours to really recover, get your legs back under you, to get your scout and your film and everything done. And then on top of that to play, you know, like you said, even if it's five minutes, 10 minutes less than you normally, anything like that, it's a huge difference. You know, if you play 30 minutes versus 20, you're going to feel so fresh if you're used to and in shape for 30 minutes. I guess the only other time that you're going to play back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games during the course of the season is, is in some sort of November tournament. Is is the grind of this any different than that, given how early in the season one is versus the competition and the level of play that you face in the ACC tournament? Yeah, I think it's a good, good test for you. Um, you also haven't played for, I don't know, like five, six months of games and everything to be in shape. Um, you're also not as beat up. But at the same time, I think it really – three games in a row is very doable. Um, you know, once you get into those four and five games in a row, it gets really, really hard. Um, so there is a huge advantage to having those buys. Um, but, you know, college-age kids should be able to handle three in a row without too much difficulty. That's Tyler Zeller. I'm Dave Nathan. This is the Coca-Cola Post Game Report. Carolina victorious over Florida State, 92 67 and fans if you find yourself in need of legal defense for a traffic violation iticket.law can be hired to defend you 24 hours a day born in chapel hill with traffic attorneys statewide visit iticket.law to learn more i'm going to press the pause button here on the coca-cola post game report sounds like the second game of the day is about ready to get started with pittsburgh and wake forest matching up it's a huge game for two teams that are on the proverbial ncaa bubble both teams have had some big wins throughout the season, but not enough to uh, to formally stamp their ticket into the NCAA tournament. So whoever Carolina gets tomorrow will be playing for its tournament life, not just in this event, but for potentially the big one coming up next week. But the Tar Heels, they know they're in the NCAA tournament, and they also know they're in the semifinals of the ACC tournament, beating Florida State 92-67. We'll come back in just a moment from Learfield. Tournament time is here, but it's never too early to prepare for North Carolina's toughest opponent, hurricane season. The Tar Heel State is no stranger to hurricanes. That's why the North Carolina Department of Insurance wants you to get storm ready now. Create an emergency kit, make a home inventory to document your possessions, and talk to your agent about flood insurance. Having a plan is key when disaster strikes. For more information on what to do before, during, and after a storm, visit ncdoi.gov slash disaster. ncdoi.gov slash disaster. Looking for the perfect match? Oh, yeah. Look at you. Find a vehicle you'll love at the Toyota Ready, Set, Go event. Toyota, let's go places. Get 2.99% APR for 36 months on a new 2024 Toyota RAV4. Offer valid through April 1st, 2024. Zero down for well-qualified buyers with approved credit and financing through Southeast Toyota Finance. 2908 monthly payment for every $1,000 financed. Excludes tax tag, registration, title, and dealer fee. See dealer for details. Jeff, I'm standing courtside where this team is about to celebrate a staggering win here in the fourth quarter. I just spoke with the team captain who told me they owe it all to Kohl's, where fans found the license gear, game day hosting fines, and other essentials they needed to rally this team to victory. He said, quote, great brands, great prices. Discover it all at Kohl's and Kohl's.com. Back to you. This is Carolina Basketball from Learfield.
For any surface and every season, Continental Tire is the smart choice in tires. From ultra-high performance tires like the Extreme Contact Sport to passenger touring tires to all-terrain light truck tires like the Terrain Contact AT, Continental has a tire that gives you confidence no matter the road conditions. Whether you're looking for summer, all-season, or winter tires, Continental Tire has something to fit your needs. Visit ContinentalTire.com to find your ideal tire. Continental Tire, a proud partner of Carolina Athletics. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes. Sync Sync My my Game. game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. It's game day, a day where great food, friends, and family always come together. And bringing people together is what Harris Teeter is all about. We make sure you have the best and most delicious game day foods. Whether you're heading to the arena or making your own tailgate at home, Harris Teeter is where Tar Heel fans shop for groceries. And you can save big on your game day celebration just by joining EVIC. Sign up today and save hundreds of dollars per month. Harris Teeter, let's game day together. As Pitt and Wake Forest get ready to tip things off in D.C., Carolina waits to meet the media in the postgame press conference. And so while there was a wait, Jones was able to catch up with Coach Davis inside the Continental Tire Coach's Corner. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Inside the Continental Tire Coach's Corner, Carolina really good today. 92-67 over Florida State. Coach, it felt like maybe the first two or three minutes your team was feeling things out. And then after that, uh, played extraordinarily well. What would you see? Yeah, I did. I felt like at the beginning of the game, just our pace on both ends just wasn't there. And maybe just trying to, you know, ease into the ACC tournament. And then then uh, I felt like our, our energy and our effort picked up defensively. We were really good getting rebounds. And then we were getting out on the break and just, you know, our guards – their ability to push the basketball, pitch ahead, everybody else running, gets us early shots and you know opportunities. And from that point on, I thought we we continued to to, to play at our pace, and um, it was one of our most complete games of the season. You talk about those three boxes that you want to check all the time with defense, rebounding, and, and taking care of the ball. They only had six rebounds in the first half. You out rebounded them by twenty six in the ball game, and you mentioned the defense. It felt like those boxes were pretty well checked today. They were the only box that didn't get fully checked was the turnovers, you know, and they were you know unforced turnovers, and that's something that we just got to continue to get better at, but defensively, we were really good in rebounding the basketball, and I just always feel like if you get after it defensively, and you rebound the basketball, like you're going to put yourself in a position whomever you play. Felt like it, you guys shot a very good percentage, but it was because you were getting very good shots. What did you feel about the, the quality of shot that you were getting today? I do. I, I really like the quality of shots that we got against um, the way that they play defensively. They switch everything. They have tremendous length and athleticism, so they take you out of pretty much every one of your sets. And so, um, you know, going anytime you play Florida State, you know, you think about defense and rebounding, but you're also really thinking about offensively. How are you going to generate good shots? And I just felt like we have a number of playmakers that can not only make shots, but create offense, create shots for us, and that allowed us to have success on the offensive end. Just two more things, Coach. You mentioned the pace. Uh, that's been something you've talked about all year long. It feels like that it, it's just been coming, been coming, been coming. Was this pretty close to the pace you want to play? I want to go faster. <laughs> I always want to go faster. And um, I felt like uh, we could have pitched the ball ahead a little bit more. That's the best way to advance the basketball. But the speed of our guards, the unselfishness of our players um, allows us to be really good in transition and also in the half court being able to create shots and you know always you know good to great and so um, everybody got involved everybody um, got to play and I'm just um, really happy for them and, and how we won today. Could you just tell us a little bit about what happens now for you guys how do, how do you manage the rest of this day as you now try to prepare for either Wake Forest or Pittsburgh tomorrow? Yeah you know one good thing of, of being the number one seed we don't play again until tomorrow at seven so we actually have more than 24 hours to be able to just rest our body um 
the Wake Forest uh, pit game is on, and so we'll just see who we play next. But you know, we've it was a tough game against Pitt on, on the road, and the one game they played Wake Forest at home, and so we know we have our hands full in the next round. But it gives us an opportunity to prepare and have the time to prepare to put ourselves in a position to play our one of our best games uh, tomorrow night. Just a really impressive day for Carolina. 92-67, the final score. Coach, as always, thank you for your time. No, thank you, Jones. I really appreciate it. And that is the Continental Tire Coach's Corner after Carolina beats Florida State 92-67. You're going to hear from Elliot Cadeau coming up. We'll give you another look at the North Carolina Farm Bureau scoreboard. And uh, Jones and Z will probably finish out their coverage from Washington, D.C. It's big Thursday so far for Carolina as the Tar Heels triumph over Florida State 92-67 from Learfield. And we're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever? That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any sports fan. So make sure you... Wait, Jim, I didn't mean try it right now. We're still on the air. Mmm. Best Coke ever? Take a taste, Jen. Really? No, not right now, Jen. We got a game to call. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talking basketball. But legendary teams let their performance do the talking. Like the Ford Bronco SUV. Rugged and powerful, so you can conquer just about any terrain. Connectivity that allows you to stay in touch. Designed to make your adventures worth talking about for years to come. Ford Bronco and Bronco Sport. That's what legends are made of. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. Some model trims and features may not be available or may be subject to change. From the mountains to the coast, 2.5 million North Carolinians are members of an electric cooperative. As a co-op member, you're part of exciting efforts to power a brighter future in the Tar Heel State. From innovative energy projects that make the grid more resilient and sustainable, to initiatives that strengthen local communities and services that make managing your energy use easier, electric cooperatives are here for you. Learn more at nclectriccooperatives.com slash brighter. This is the Tar Heel Sports Network from Learfield. They're not just the Tar Heels, they're your Tar Heels. Customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today to show your Carolina pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Tar Heels. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official bank of Carolina athletics. Copyright 2023. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. It's bow time. Sometimes the craving for Bojangles Supremes is so strong you just gotta have them. Even when your gas tank is on empty and Bojangles is still 10 miles down the highway. Nothing beats the flavor of Bojangles Juicy Golden Supremes, especially when they're part of a perfect combo with four boldly seasoned chicken Supremes, a made from scratch biscuit, fixin', and some legendary iced tea. The only thing that can satisfy your hunger is that delicious southern flavor. So when the craving is supreme, put the pedal to the metal. It's bow time. Your one stop for all college sports is the Varsity app and the brand new Varsity Network website, thevarsitynetwork.com. Keep up with your favorite teams and the rest of college sports no matter where you are with thevarsitynetwork.com. Live and on demand broadcasts, your favorite college centric podcasts with stories and video around college sports and your favorite teams. Be sure to download the Varsity app and check out the brand new Varsity Network website, thevarsitynetwork.com. All right, Carolina wins 92-67. I just got a chance to talk to Coach Davis. You heard that. But Tariel's now in the press conference. I figured you wouldn't turn down the opportunity to hear more from R.J. Davis, Armando Bacon, and, and Coach Davis. So let's go back there now and listen uh, a little bit to those three guys in the press conference, too. A little bit, but, um, I mean, it feels good, especially when you're up big and everyone gets to play and everyone's contributing in so many ways. I mean, that's the type of games you want to play. 4-4 four, four on the side. Adam Smith with Inside Carolina uh, wanted to ask Armando what you made of the rebounding. It was 822 in you guys' favor. And also, could you take us inside some of those sequences late in the first half? I think you had four offensive rebounds there on the, the final possession, and there was the other possession where you're batted it out to Harrison and it ends up with a Cormac three. Just can you talk about that a little bit? 
Yeah, we knew coming into the game that they were 14th in terms of uh, allowing offensive rebounds, and we were number one or two, one or the other. Um, so we knew we had an advantage on the boards, and I think Harry early on, just how he was on the boards, it really pushed me, Jay Wash, and all of us to even get more. And you talk about that last play, that was a lot of fun, just all of us just getting rebounds and keeping the ball alive. It was a ton of fun. Here in the back row. Yeah, uh, Jeremiah Holloway with Inside Carolina. This one's for RJ and Armando. I know you guys already talked about <coughs> Seth and his impact off the bench, but with him, obviously Jalen Washington, Jalen Withers, they have, you know, obviously different, you know, skill sets than, you know, you guys in the starting five. How do you kind of see them change games and, you know, impact games and, and, and really make games different uh, when they're in the game? Well, I mean, I think, you know, all three of their impacts, you know, help us. Um, you know, Seth with his intensity on the defensive end and his speed and athleticism to get downhill. And then Jay Wise uh, with his, you know, his length, um, his ability to shoot from the outside floor. And Jay Witt, um, his athleticism and defensive. So I think all three of those guys have made key impacts throughout the whole year, not into today's game. But um, that's really what we feed off of. And uh, to have guys come in and make an impact and make runs, um, that's huge for us. And that's winning basketball. In the back in the corner. Brendan Marks from The Athletic. Hey, Hubert. Um, just wanted to ask you, you mentioned it starts with defense for you guys. How have you seen Elliott progress as a defender, maybe from the time you started recruiting him to now and embrace that part of his game and the importance of it? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a big transition coming from high school and playing at this level. In high school, you may play defense when your guy gets the ball, and here it's just not going to work. The guys are just too talented, and so... You know, one of the things that we talk about all the time is at this level, you have to play defense before you play defense. And so um, Elliot is at every day is understanding how important and how good of a defensive player he can be. And that leads to him diving on loose balls and getting extra possessions, uh, climbing into the ball, boxing out, um, talking on defense. And so you just continue to see that growth in him. And it's it's been fun to watch. Second round. Uh, RJ and Armando, you guys were able to play in the Bahamas earlier in November, you know, three games in three days. You're going to probably face something similar here, playing twice in the span of, you know, 24 hours. What's that process like, and what's the recovery, you know, going to be like tonight? It's huge for us because we know we'll be coming in, playing to one or the other, uh, Wake Forest or um, Pitt. Pitt. So, and both of those teams are hungry, so it's important for us to get great recovery and then lock in on the scout. Okay, we have time for one more question. Does anyone else have any questions? Yeah, I'll give you a second. Yeah, just a question for Hubert. Want to know if you have the data yet on your aura ring? How fast your heart rate got up to? I didn't wear it. No, I didn't. I forgot to charge it. What? And so, <laughs> thank you for getting me in trouble with my wife. Okay, Did, you got him one of those. Did you get that from me? No, you. I had it first, yeah. You did? Me and James, we got one. I'm following Armando. This is good. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's awesome, yeah. What do you need one for? Hey, I'm 53. I like to track my sleep. Yeah, she likes to track my sleep, too. How much REM sleep do you get? Four hours. That's more than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, seems to have gone off the rails a bit there in the uh, Tar Heel press conference, so uh, we appreciate uh, hearing from those gentlemen after you heard from Coach Davis a little earlier as well. So uh, we're going to get out of here from courtside. Dave will take you through. If we uh, still need to hear from Elliot Cadeau, I think, so you'll hear that Elliot Cadeau conversation. Adam caught up with Elliot um, a little bit ago. Here, uh, the pit weight game has gone to the first time out. It's 10-9 pit with the early advantage over the Demon Deacon, so obviously a long way to go. Carolina plays the winner of this game tomorrow at 7 o'clock. We'll be on the air with that coverage starting at 6 tomorrow evening. Um, Z, any final thoughts from you? Just, I, just a really impressive, complete game from Carolina today with that uh, cruising victory over Florida State. I agree. I think you got so many impacts. I was looking at you know how to even single one of these guys out, but everybody did so many things. Um, you know, I think it's just a fun game to watch. Great win. Hopefully, we can continue to carry that over tomorrow. Yeah, Carolina ends up with six guys score more than eight points 
Uh, Cadeau with eight, nine for Ingram, 12 for Trimble, 14 apiece for Ryan and Baycott, and R.J. Davis paces the heels with 18. So um, that'll finish our coverage here courtside of the Coke Postgame Report, brought to you by Coke and Coke Zero, which is irresistibly tasty. Does that make it the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. Old Dominion, best in the game. Man, that's hard. Let's show I'm we're going to share this one, just everybody. This is a team game today for Carolina. Um, Cadeau was really good. R.J. Davis hit big shots. Cormac Ryan hit some uh, wide-open threes that helped stretch this one out. Baycott with a double-double. Ingram, Withers, Trimble. I mean, a uh, bunch of different guys contributed. Old Dominion Freight Line works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Pitt has opened up a 17-12 lead over Wake here. The winner, again, gets Carolina in the semifinal round tomorrow. Don't go anywhere. Dave will get you the rest of the way. That includes a conversation with Elliot Cadeau, full rundown of the stats and scores as well. Tar Heels blow past Florida State in the quarterfinal round, 92-67 from Learfield. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog.